It's like he's in a, in an angry mood and not in a bad way, but just like ultra determined and clearly just not here for a good time and lollipops and rainbows. Like he's here to take a pound out of you and stand over you and scream at you while he's doing it. And, and I really do think that filters on down through the team. Exactly. And, and, and to be honest, it filters through the media. I mean, I there, look. I I don't know about that because you and Moj and McGahey and well, Katie are always <laughs> perpetually very effervescent <laughs> individuals. We, I okay, I would agree with you, but there is a uh, timidness, if for lack of better words, <laughs> that you go around Nathan McKinnon that you're going to respect him no matter what. So the joking sort of takes a back seat when you're around him because he, you know, I'm not saying he's not a fun-loving guy, but it's all business with yeah. him and. And I think, you know who's going to benefit the most maybe from this? And I, I hesitate to say it a little bit because I'm not sure exactly of the culture in Buffalo, but Casey Middlestat, I think, will benefit from being around Nathan McKinnon and sort of the attitude that there is one way, there is one direction, there is one goal. And it's too, it's too often used as a cliche, but I'm not kidding when I say that Nathan McKinnon is an absolute bulldog in everything that he does. And it is a, it's infectious and everybody in the locker room knows it. You respect it. You get on board. You're part of it. And when, when you were talking about angry, it is an angry thing, and it, it doesn't stop. And I, even after they won the Cup in 2022, I felt like he wanted another game almost. It's, it's almost <laughs> like he wasn't done playing. And, and that, that's sort of the attitude that I think this team has taken on because of Nate. And so angry might be the best way to describe it. Follow every second of the action on NHL Network Radio. From behind the bench to every play on the ice. If it's hockey, it's on Sirius XM NHL Network Radio. Sirius XM 91. I'm Frank Trachtenberg with your Sirius XM NHL schedule for Wednesday, April the 3rd. All times are Eastern and please remember, all games, times and channels are subject to change. Check SiriusXM.com for the latest updates. In the NHL, 7 p.m., Toronto Maple Leafs take on the Tampa Bay Lightning. Leafs on Sirius and XM channels 91, Internet 947. Lightning on Internet 946. 7 p.m., New York Rangers face the New Jersey Devils. Rangers on XM 219, Internet 939. Devils on Internet 937. 9.30 p.m., LA Kings face the Seattle Kraken. Kings on XM 221, Internet 933. Kraken on Internet 944. 10 p.m., Dallas Stars take on the Edmonton Oilers. Stars on XM 220, Internet 929. Oilers on Internet 931. 10 p.m., Arizona Coyotes take on the Vancouver Canucks. Coyotes on Sirius and XM channels 91, Internet 921. Canucks on Internet 948. I'm Frank Trachtenberg with your Sirius XM NHL schedule for Wednesday, April the 3rd. All times are Eastern, and please remember, all games, times, and channels are subject to change. Check SiriusXM.com for the latest updates. In the NHL, 7 p.m., Toronto Maple Leafs take on the Tampa Bay Lightning. Leafs on Sirius and XM channels 91, Internet 947. Lightning on Internet 946. 7 p.m., New York Rangers face the New Jersey Devils. Rangers on XM 219, Internet 939. Devils on Internet 937. 9.30 p.m., LA Kings face the Seattle Kraken. Kings on XM 221, Internet 933. Kraken on Internet 944. 10 p.m., Dallas Stars take on the Edmonton Oilers. Stars on XM 220, Internet 929. Oilers on Internet 931. 10 p.m., Arizona Coyotes take on the Vancouver Canucks. Coyotes on Sirius and XM channels 91, Internet 921. Canucks on Internet 948. I'm Frank Trachtenberg with your Sirius XM NHL schedule for Wednesday, April the 3rd. All times are Eastern, and please remember, all games, times, and channels are subject to change. Check SiriusXM.com for the latest updates. In the NHL, 7 p.m., Toronto Maple Leafs take on the Tampa Bay Lightning. Leafs on Sirius and XM channels 91, Internet 947. Lightning on Internet 946. Sirius XM Fantasy Sports Radio is the place for expert advice, strategy, and information from the best fantasy sports analysis to win your league. Plus, hear pick-by-pick coverage of live drive and interviews with top players, coaches, and team executives on Sirius XM 87. While most of the attention is on the NHL's upcoming postseason, Jason Greger, host of the Jason Greger Show on Sports 1440 AM in Edmonton, joins Dave McCarthy on NHL Network Radio, Sirius XM Channel 91, to talk about a club that may not see playoff action for some time. Greger says the recent deal that saw the San Jose Sharks send forward Thomas Hurdle to the Las Vegas Golden Knights should have set off alarm bells for Sharks fans. Two years ago, the Sharks were bad, but the organization didn't want to admit it. And so now, like, retaining salary for six years, I know it's only 17%, but 
but it's still like, man, like, so the Sharks are going to be terrible again, Dave, next year. And they can't even, they, even if they want to trade off some of their players, they won't be able to retain any salary next trade deadline because they have Burns, Carlson, and Hurdle on retention. They can't do it. Exactly. And then they've got uh, two of those slots used up all, really almost till the end of time with Carlson and now Thomas Hurdle. Like, does that almost tell you, is that a message being sent from San Jose to, to the fan base, to the players being like, folks, buckle up. It is going to be some time uh, before we get good again. Because like I, I like what you said. That's a real cautionary tale uh, for Pittsburgh. What it would have meant if they had have signed Jay Gensel this year, it would have been the Thomas Hurdle situation from a couple of years ago. Okay, they ended up getting there first. But what you've done is you've burnt two years in the process and haven't moved your organization forward. Like You do have to look reality in the eyes sometimes and recognize when you're not good and make decisions that you maybe would rather not make but no you have to so at least Pittsburgh made the right call on on that situation with Gensel but is that to you a signal in San Jose that it's still going to be a long time before they're any good so Dave they've missed this this will be I think five years in a row they missed the playoffs um and I'll say like so because this is the first year they finally admitted their rebuild so um to me I'll tell Sharks fans, you might have another seven years before you're a playoff team. Like, look at their team. Like, who who do they have? Like, which prospects do they have coming? Will Smith? Other than that, who else? Um, they're probably going to have to hope that uh, that they are terrible and then they win the draft lottery in, in, in two years and get the young kid out of Medicine Hat. His name escapes me right now. It's absolutely killing it as a 16-year-old. Um, but, you know, that's kind of where they're at, man. Um, they've they got all those... Bad, like Logan Couture. Now, the concern about Logan Couture, Davis, his career might be over, um, you know, health wise mm-hmm. for him. So, you know, he'd be so they'll have an LTI space, but they're not going to spend it a cap. Like, why would they? The team's terrible. So, um, what they have to do is try to at least get guys on short term deals like Chicago's doing, right? To, to at least give a semblance of professionalism in your room around your young players, have guys like Nick Felino and other guys who are true pros. You know, and you pay him four million a year because you got all the cap space in the world. But like, like Vlasic's a seven million dollar player. Hasn't been a seven million dollar player for four years. Like, you know, there's another cautionary tale of. I think the one mistake in hockey, and more organizations need to inherit the Bill Belichick, and 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 bordering on Vegas. Vegas is the one team that isn't afraid to be like, hey, nothing personal here. But guess what? If we don't think you can do it anymore, like they went out and got Thomas Hurdle basically telling the guys on their team now, well, we're not going to re-sign all. Like, Jonathan Marshall, you're probably done. Right? Like, they don't yeah. have money. Uh, they, can't, they can't afford them. Get the latest news, opinion, and analysis from MMA to boxing and the professional wrestling world 24-7. Sirius XM Fight Nation. Sirius XM 156. And the SXM app. I'm Frank Trachtenberg with your Sirius XM NHL schedule for Wednesday, April the 3rd. All times are Eastern, and please remember, all games, times, and channels are subject to change. Check SiriusXM.com for the latest updates. In the NHL, 7 p.m., Toronto Maple Leafs take on the Tampa Bay Lightning. Leafs on Sirius and XM channels 91, Internet 947. Lightning on Internet 946. 7 p.m., New York Rangers face the New Jersey Devils. Rangers on XM 219, Internet 939. Devils on Internet 937. 9.30 p.m., LA Kings face the Seattle Kraken. Kings on XM 221, Internet 933. Kraken on Internet 944. 10 p.m., Dallas Stars take on the Edmonton Oilers. Stars on XM 220, Internet 929. Oilers on Internet 931. 10 p.m., Arizona Coyotes take on the Vancouver Canucks. Coyotes on Sirius and XM channels 91, Internet 921. Canucks on Internet 948. I'm Frank Trachtenberg with your Sirius XM NHL schedule for Wednesday, April the 3rd. All times are Eastern, and please remember, all games, times, and channels are subject to change. Check SiriusXM.com for the latest updates. In the NHL, 7 p.m., Toronto Maple Leafs take on the Tampa Bay Lightning. Leafs on Sirius and XM channels 91, Internet 947. Lightning on Internet 946. 7 p.m., New York Rangers face the New Jersey Devils. Rangers on XM 219, Internet 939. Devils on Internet 937. 9.30 p.m., LA Kings face the Seattle Kraken. Kings on XM 221, Internet 933. Kraken on Internet 944. 10 p.m., Dallas Stars take on the Edmonton Oilers. Stars on XM 220, Internet 929. Oilers on Internet 931. 10 p.m., Arizona Coyotes take on the Vancouver Canucks. Coyotes on Sirius and XM channels 91, Internet 921. Canucks on Internet 948. I'm Frank Trachtenberg with your Sirius XM NHL schedule for Wednesday, April the 3rd.
All times are Eastern, and please remember, all games, times, and channels are subject to change. Check SiriusXM.com for the latest updates. In the NHL, 7 p.m., Toronto Maple Leafs take on the Tampa Bay Lightning. Leafs on Sirius and XM channels 91, Internet 947, Lightning on Internet 946. Mad Dog Sports Radio has the best sports talk in the business. Covering sports with a passion and knowledge you need. Mad Dog Sports Radio. Sirius XM 86 and the SXM app. The rebuild continues in La Belle Provence. Connor McKenna is one of the co-hosts on the morning show on TSN 690 All Sports Radio in Montreal. And he joins Boomer Gordon on The Point on NHL Network Radio, Sirius XM Channel 91, to go over another season of rebuilding for the Canadians. I sometimes don't know where the Montreal Canadiens are in their development. When you assess this season, what do you think Habs management wanted this season to be? And if you are giving them true serum, even though it's not going to be a playoff year, do you think enough good things are happening right now that they would consider this year a success? Uh, short answer, yes. And uh, you know, longer answer is that Martin St. Louis was interviewed yesterday, and he really has been such a, a pleasure to cover and to listen to, um, and his insights been so appreciated. And, you know, he was musing about the last time the Canadians and Bruins played each other and brought up the fact that the game went into the third period with the Bruins at the goal, and then things uh, got out of hand, I think is what he says. And everybody in the room kind of had a laugh. What happened was the Bruins scored four unanswered goals and beat the Canadians 9-4. Uh, and he talked about how that was a bit of a wake-up call for the group, that they really came together and played a lot uh, better in, in the aftermath of that game. But I was kind of marveling at the fact that this is a team that finished 32nd two years ago, 28th last year, sit 27th in the standings right now. And the head coach is musing humorously and getting laughs about a blowout loss against their arch rivals. And nobody's in this city is batting an eyelash. You know, people feel so good about the group that's running the show and believe in them that the fan base is is on board. It's it's kind of an amazing thing to see because I don't think in the history of the Montreal Canadiens we haven't really seen a rebuild. We don't know where this road ends, but I'd say that overall, of course, there are some dissenting voices out there who want to win now. But I'd say overall, the, the buy-in from the fan base is remarkable. Well, my thought is I think the rebuild should end soon, Connor, and this is one of the things I wanted to get in with you. It feels like the Canadians have been stockpiling draft picks for about eight years now, and the reason it feels that way is because they have been, and it's great to have a lot of picks. And I know there was a GM change a few years ago, so maybe you draw a line between the Bergevin era and the new administration, kind of a rebuild out of a rebuild, but at some point, we need to transfer those picks into players, and I know they're doing that now, and we got to turn those players into wins. So if I was a Montreal Canadian fan watching the deadline thinking, okay, great, we acquired a couple more picks, but we already have tons of picks. We have tons of picks this year, next year. It, it, at some point, we're going to need to win some hockey games is what I'm saying. Yeah, I, mean, I think, you know, I saw Ken Hughes being interviewed about this during the uh, intermission on TSN the other night. And he told Kenzie Lalone that the goal for next season is to be competitive and certainly not to finish in a spot where you're drafting fifth, sixth, or seventh overall again. And I think that's the way you handle that if you're Ken Hughes. You don't want to get into those kind of waters where you're saying, you know, the goal next year is the playoffs. Well, if you do that in a market like this with the kind of scrutiny that the team is under and that every word the general manager utters is under, and you don't make the playoffs, or even if you say we want to compete for a playoff spot, and then you don't compete for a playoff spot, they're going to hold your feet to the fire. MLB Network Radio is your home for 24-7 baseball talk, featuring on-site coverage of every major event from spring training through the World Series and expert analysis from former general managers and players. Sirius XM, Channel 8. I'm Frank Trachtenberg with your Sirius XM NHL schedule for Wednesday, April the... ...against Edmonton. 23 minutes to face off. This is Rogers Game Night on the Oilers Radio Network. Hey, Paul Brandt here. You know what I'm a fan of? Alberta. The wide open spaces, the highways and byways, and a rugged, beautiful terrain that I'm proud to call home. Maybe that's why I'm also a fan of my Ford F-150. It's tough, capable, and smart, which makes it a natural fit for roads like these. So if it's a new truck you're looking for, look no further than the truck Albertans love to drive. F-150. Head into your Alberta Ford dealer and tell them PB sent you. 
every time the Oilers play, you win. Because for $4.95, you can grab a KFC Big Crunch sandwich every Oilers game day. That's right. For only $4.95, you can bite into a KFC sandwich filled with a crispy seasoned chicken breast and topped with lettuce and mayo anytime the Oilers hit the ice. KFC, it's finger licking good. Offer only redeemable in restaurant at participating KFC locations. Other conditions may apply. You're listening to Rogers Game Night on the official voice of the Edmonton Oilers, 630 Chan, and on the Oilers Radio Network. Welcome back, Rogers Game Night. Tonight's Animals of Oil Country 50-50 jaff- uh, jackpot is currently sitting at 290000 and climbing. You can buy your tickets now to be eligible to win for tonight's early bird prizes. 8 p.m. for 500 bucks for level wear and 9 p.m. for $500 for ESSO. And tonight's Animals of Oil Country 50-50 is in support of the Edmonton Humane Society and Dogs with Wings, helping ensure all domestic animals and Northern Alberta have a safe, loving home and can provide assistance to the people in need. All right, let's take care of a little bit of business here. As uh, we go to Legacy Heating and Cooling, who's hot and who's not? Legacy Heating and Cooling, home and home payments and no interest for a year. So McDavid and Dry settle on eight game point streaks. Matthias Ekholm, he's red hot. He's in a five game heater, two goals, eight points, plus nine during that stretch. Who's not? Evander Kane hasn't scored in 20. The orders need to get him going. Local ties for Sobeys and Safeway liquor, wine, spirits, beer, and so much more. We will tell you Sam Steele, represented by Edmonton's Jerry Johansson, fourth line center of the Regina Pats. uh, Played five seasons there. Of course, he's from Ardrossan. And uh, he and Carter Hart were playing uh, for Sherwood Park when uh, Stuart Skinner and Tyler Benson uh, and James Hamlin were with the Southside Athletic Club a number of years ago. To the out-of-town scoreboard, it is brought to you by Pizza 73, the official pizza of the Edmonton Oilers. It has been a wild night in the National Hockey League. The New York Rangers and the New Jersey Devils had a five-on-five line brawl, old school, to start the game. We're going to talk about that coming up in about four minutes' time with Rob Brown. Uh, that game is currently... Everybody got tossed out of the game other than the initial fracas, including a super heavyweight battle between Matt Rempe of the Rangers and arguably the toughest guy in the league right now, Curtis McDermott. So, 3-3 Devils and the Rangers. Meanwhile, the Tampa Bay Lightning, two assists from Nikita Kucherov. They lead the Leafs 3-1, and in that game, Ryan Reeves went toe-to-toe and beat Tanner Janot. That was a pretty good tilt as well. Later tonight, NHL, besides the Oilers and the Dallas Stars, We'll have the Seattle Kraken at the LA Kings and the Vancouver Canucks are uh, in Arizona to play the Coyotes. Bakersfield Condors tonight in AHL action. Uh, they are hosting Tucson. Dylan Hallway, we should been mentioned, has been moved up. Uh, check that. They are not. Yeah, they got Tucson tonight. Uh, Dylan Holloway is going to be moved up uh, from second line center to play first line left wing in that game. I wonder if that's a precursor of where Holloway may end up. Might be ending up on the left side with the Edmonton Oilers. So that's the out-of-town scoreboard brought to you by Pizza 73, the official pizza of your Edmonton Oilers. And stay tuned following the game for the Alberta Blue Cross insurance goal of the game. Whatever life brings, we've got the coverage you need, visit ab.bluecross.ca. All right, an extended conversation with Rob Brown coming up. 18 minutes to face off. This is Rogers Game Night on the Oilers Radio Network. When you play the largest 50-50 in sports, everybody wins. Your support makes all of oil country a better place. A place of kindness, caring, and compassion. Uplifting those in need, changing lives forever. The largest 50-50 pot in professional sports is currently Currently growing by the second. Get your tickets now at edmontonoilers.com and help change lives today. Maybe even your own. AGLC license number 645766. Over the last decade, the world of work has changed dramatically. It's a change that can cause a disconnect between a company and its employees. But a partnership with Aon can help by making decisions that create a more flexible, engaged, and resilient workforce. Aon's experience and expertise, global understanding, and advanced analytics ensure that every client is better informed and better advised so that they can make better decisions. Whatever the next decade brings... Aon is in the business of better decisions. This is Rogers Game Night on the Oilers Radio Network. All right, welcome back, everybody. Rogers Game Night, courtesy of Rogers. 
Canada's largest and most reliable 5G network, and we bring our border inside the game analyst, Rob Brown. Hello, Rob. How are you? I'm very good, Bob. Uh, we're going to go and talk about one of my least favorite topics, fighting. Mm. Uh, but with all seriousness, uh, the New York Rangers and the New Jersey Devils, and I think we need to preface this by saying that Matt Rempe had run rough shot over the Devils. He had injured Nathan Bastian. Um, and uh, the Rangers have a big, physical, tough team, as we know, with Jacob Truba on defense. The Devils went out and got Curtis McDermott, and they threw down old school at the start of their game and had a five-on-five -five line brawl. And I know the pacifists out there hate it. I'd like to get your thoughts. Well, I, I, Travis Green, coach in the New Jersey Devils, was sending a message. He said, all right, uh, Rempe had been... He, he played like a moron against them the last couple games. A couple, seriously, a couple vicious uh, plays. That, that was a, a horrible elbow that he threw to a, to a skilled player. Uh, there was no need for it. Got suspended by the league, but and then he wouldn't fight. And you and I talked about that before. Yeah. So the Travis Green said, "All right, we're sending these players out. Send out Rempe. I got my five toughest guys out. Or I got five, my fourth, the fourth line, and I got my third pairing defenseman. Uh, let's let's do this. We're we're going to be physical against you. And Laviolette starts Rempe. That's the right play." And they fight. What I didn't like about Laviolette, he had his first pairing defenseman out there, Truba and Miller. They're in a playoff race. And you've got your, they're kicked out two seconds into the game. Now you're playing 59 minutes and 58 seconds without your top pairing defenseman. To me, that's dumb. So I thought Green, smart play, having the two tough guys out there and Rempe standing up for the dumb things that he did before, all good. I did not like the fact that the Rangers put out their, uh, you know, Truba and Miller on the ice, and they both get kicked out of the game in, in a game well, that's... Well, I get important. Ryan Lindgren out on the ice, who is a tenacious, yes. hard-nosed little less. But, half, uh, but you, you don't want... I mean, and then, I mean, what if Truba breaks his hand or Miller breaks his hand? To me, that was just dumb, because you know... So, well, you at least, didn't have Adam At least he didn't have Adam Fox on the ice. No, true, true. But, I mean, you, the, the New Jersey Devils sent out their third-pairing defenseman in their fourth line. That's who you have out on the ice. Yeah. Uh, the Rangers, by putting out Truba, I mean, if they end up losing the game, it was, it was tied last I saw. But it's 4-3. The, the Rangers just scored in the power. Okay, so, but this was this is an important game for the Rangers. They, they have a chance to come first overall in the entire National Hockey League. So I didn't like that part. As far as the fight, as I told Reed. Uh, for for some of the guys on the ice, and for every one of their mums and dads, it's not always a good feeling. For everyone else watching, it was entertainment. Did you know any father that liked watching? Like you saw how Darnell Nurse reacted when he. I'm trying to think. Was it Max McCormick that was with Ottawa and Dar Darnell just destroyed him? Uh, but did you know any any father that liked watching his kid fight? Well, I, I, I've seen Kachuk in the stands a couple times when his kids are fighting. He seems to enjoy it. Um, I, I, I think there's always apprehension when yeah. your kid is in a fight. Uh, normally, I mean, all it takes is one lucky shot or one one really heavy shot to, to hurt your kid. Fighting is not easy, and fighting doesn't always end up well for one of the players in it. I can tell you that for, from experience. So, yeah, no, most parents would, would prefer not to watch their kids get into a fight. And it's even worse than a five-on-five, because five. if it's a one-on-one -on -one fight, there's always a referee there in case things get out of hand and can get in very quickly, or teammates can get in very quickly. When it's a five-on-five, five, uh, the, refer the referee and linesmen are going and watching the biggest fight. Yeah, because that's where someone could really get hurt. So you could be stuck by yourself, and all of a sudden you start losing a fight, and you got nobody there to help you. And that's the one fear for players that are not normal, normally in fights, is you could be stuck in, in a, a mismatch, and you've got no help coming for quite a long time. Yeah, uh, Rob Brown, a.k.a. Down Goes Brown, but that's because you were good enough to play and be in that situation. Rob, I remember Dave Semenko fighting Dwight Schofield. The Canadians had called Schofield up. He'd been a career minor leaguer. He was probably 6'2", 6'3", three. I'm pretty, sure, I'm pretty sure I played with Dwight Schofield in Pittsburgh. I think I played with him. And he could look after himself, yep. and he surprised. And this was when Dave Semenko, it would have been like 82, 83, and at that time, Larry Playfair and Dave Semenko were the two toughest guys in Ben Wilson. They were the three toughest guys in the league. 
and Dwight Schofield landed a couple big shots on Sammy. And I remember he looked at him after the fight and said, you're blanking nothing. Like to like Dave Semenko when Dave Semenko was Wayne Gretzky's number one, and you know and it just it just showed you just talked about it like it, any anybody like he hung in there and there's times he lost, but uh, he, so you you played with him in pit towards the end of his career. Right? I think I think so. It sounds familiar. My memory's not very good, Bob. I, I remember playing I, with I know guys he like played in Detroit early in his career. He played in Washington late in his career in St. Louis. Um, you know, you know, see, you probably would know the players I played with better than I do. Played with Wolf Paymont, Jimmy Mann, those guys. They were well, a little Jimmy, scary. Yeah, and you did play with Paymont. Uh, he was there in 86, 87. Oh, I, I was there in 87, I think. Yeah, so you just missed him. Okay. He was the, yeah, so he played 25 games towards the end of his career. Uh, he, like, he's 68, Rob, so he's got to have, like, how many years would he have had on you? Couples. Yeah, he's got at least a decade on you. You know that, and I know that. Well, in fact, he's probably got. What's he got? Fifteen? What are you? 15? No, I'm. I turn fifty-six next week. Okay, so he's got twelve years on him. But Rob, I'd like put things in perspective. He spent seven years in the minors before he came up with the Canadians that year. He's playing for Nova Scotia. So there's, and there's guys like that all over the place that were like legitimately tough guys in the minors that could show up and, and do pretty well. People say, well, why are you talking about, well, because we had a line brawl in one game and then Tanner Janot went toe to toe. That was a good fight. We watched, Reed and I fought that, or watched that one. That was another good fight. Pro uh, not a lot marginal. of fighting in the NHL, but there certainly was tonight. Yeah, well, and they got a guy on this team in Dallas that as a player, as a high-end player, is as good a fighter as there is amongst any of the star players. I don't know if he's a star anymore, but Jamie Benn. Like, Jamie Benn is, you know, he is still capable when he decides to do it and throw it out. He's, he's still a... He's, he, to me, he, he's a, a Corey Perry. He's a pro's pro. He, he understands yeah. the, the game, and he sometimes crosses a line. We've seen that against the Oilers, and we certainly saw that last year in the playoffs against Mark Stone. But he's a guy that uh, you want on your team. And, yeah. it, 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 and again, like Corey Perry, who at one time, 50 goal score MVP in the league, uh, Jamie Penn, Ben has found another role. They've got other players that do the scoring better than he does, but he still finds a way to make himself valuable on a very, very good Dallas Stars so team. So Brian, Brian Boucher is here. Your dad uh, had him in Tri-Cities mm -hmm. after uh, your dad was uh, no longer with the Kamloops Blazers, of course. Your father later was an Edmonton Oilers uh, scout for a while, and, I, 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 I'm, and that's where I want to go next because a lot of people thought Dallas was going to be dead in the water. Well, in the 2017 draft, so they take Heishkin in third overall. That's the third overall pick. You're going to hit on those nine times out of ten. They hit on them. But then they got Ottinger 26, and they got Robertson 39th, and that was in 2017. Oh, wait, they got Horope hits in the second round of 2015. Then they turn around in 21, and the Oilers passed on uh, Wyatt Johnson, who Paul Coffey coached and drafted Xavier Borgo to the Quebec League. Tyler Wright did, and boom, Dallas gets both. Wyatt Johnson, a 29-goal score, and Logan Stankoven, who was 1-2 with Maverick Bork in the minors in scoring. Oh, wait, Maverick Bork was the guy that was really driving a lot of the offense for Xavier Borgo. This Dallas team, they've drafted well, Rob, and they've drafted their way back into contention. Oh, they have. Uh, they're they're filling the coffers. They, they got some players that are older and uh, going probably the third period of their careers, but they've also got these young studs down in the minors that are learning how to play in the minors not being forced to play too soon up here so this is a Dallas team that's going to be good for for a long time and uh, fun to watch uh, again Reed and I were just talking this used to be a team that they would try to beat you one nothing now it's a team that's capable of beating you six five so they are going to be a tough out in, in the playoffs uh, to me Dallas and Colorado are heads above the other teams in their division and I expect those two teams to play each other in the Whatever or their their semifinal or the the Western Conference semifinal, and it'll be a team built with superstars against a team that's built deep all the way through their lineup. All right, so uh, Dallas and Colorado plus 56, plus 55, Edmonton and Vancouver plus 55 in goal differential, and there's a real separation between them and the other teams in the West. 
Are they the four best teams? No, I don't think so. To me, the four best. I, I think that you got the two teams built on superstars, Colorado and Edmonton. Uh, they, they have the, the best players in the National Hockey League, I believe, are on those two teams. Then you got the two teams, to me, that are built uh, the deepest from top to bottom, and that's the Dallas Stars and the Vegas Golden Knights. I think both yeah. those teams. I mean, Vegas, the, the record they've had, they've had so many injuries this year. We don't even know what they've got no. because we're not going to know until playoff game number one. 100%. And they're getting Thomas Hurdle skating now. And Tom, I, I'm a Thomas Hurdle fan. I, he, I, I felt sorry for him the last year or two in, in San San Jose, he was their only player. To me, Vancouver is a wild card. The other teams have all proven what they're capable of doing at playoff time. Vancouver hasn't. Uh, they've got incredible talent. They've got, I believe that Hughes is going to win the Norris this year. I think that McCarr's a better all-around defenseman, but I think Hughes has had the better season. They got a good goaltender if he's healthy in Demko. So they're the wild card, but to me, the four best teams are Edmonton, Vegas, Colorado, and Dallas. Wow, it's going to be interesting. Quick out of town pizza 73 update. Uh, Tampa Bay has finished off the Leafs. They've won 4 1, two points for Kucherov. So Nikita Kucherov is now at 129 points. Okay, and he's got seven games left. McKinnon's at 127. He has seven left. McDavid's at 126. He has nine left. Who's going to win the scoring race, Rob? I, I, honestly, I don't know because it'll depend what happens down the stretch if any of these players sit out during the. Yeah. So I, I would never bet against McDavid. I watched Kucherov tonight. He had two, could have had five. Uh, he had a breakaway that they should have got a penalty shot on. They didn't give him call a penalty. Uh, McKinnon has the ability to have five or six points in a given night. Uh, I'm excited. I, I hope it goes down to the last game, Edmonton and Colorado. When yeah, the two it's gonna... I mean, that game could mean nothing in the standings, but it could certainly mean who wins the scoring title. And the thing about that game, if one player, if McKinnon or McDavid is within five, they're capable of getting five points in a game, both those players. So uh, I think that's one of just the side side things that you can watch here as this season winds down who wins that scoring title. We're joined by Rob Brown. This is Rogers Game Night, courtesy of Rogers, Canada's largest and most reliable 5G network. Rob, it's time. Let's go to the Ford Keys to the Game. Ford is the official partner of the Edmonton Oilers, built Ford Proud. Well, the Edmonton Oilers' top two lines, you, you always know you're going to get consistency out of them, but tonight their third and fourth lines are going to have to play a big part in this game too because Dallas has no weakness. They don't they don't have to overplay their first and second lines because their third and fourth lines are, are good. Uh, they're deep. So the Oilers' third and fourth lines have to match uh, whatever Dallas throws out there. Uh, I think that the biggest battle to me tonight is going to be Connor McDavid against Heiskanen. Heiskanen can skate. He can play with McDavid. It's, if McDavid wins that battle, the Oilers probably win the hockey game. That's our Inside the Game analyst, Rob Brown. A little bit of extended coverage with Rob. Rob and Reed Wilkins will join us during the end of the roll. First intermission and second intermission. Rob will join me post-game. Camoon has been pumped, stoked, and jacked all day to call this game. Good luck with the Stars jerseys, Cam. He'll have the call up next on four dealers NHL hockey and the Oilers radio network American Airlines Center in Dallas, Texas. Live sky high with remarkable units for rent and for sale at Sky Signature Suites. Currently offering amazing incentives on one and two bedroom rentals featuring designer finishes, resort-like amenities and breathtaking views. All of this and more within the heart of Ice District, Edmonton's best address for shopping, dining, entertainment, and fun. Visit SkySignatureSuites.com and make your home high above the ordinary. It takes some courage to get out there and travel. You never know if your bags might mysteriously vanish. Or if that guacamole is going to come back to haunt you. Or if the plane just never takes off in the first place. But through it all, you have a partner in Alberta Blue Cross. Our travel insurance lets you take the security of home with you, wherever you go. Whatever life brings, be ready for it. Find travel insurance today at ab.bluecross.ca. Chemco is building industry across Canada, and now they're on the lookout for civil and electrical project managers, estimators, and superintendents to join their dedicated team. Why Chemco? Because Chemco cares. They put people first, offering top-tier compensation packages and an unwavering commitment to safety. 
At Camco, safety isn't just a priority. It's everybody's business. Ready to be part of a team that truly values you? Visit Camco.com slash careers today. Did you know that there are nine Napa Auto Parts stores serving the greater Edmonton area and have been doing so for more than 50 years? Since Napa first opened in Edmonton, the community has grown and vehicles have changed, but you can always trust Napa Auto Parts to provide you with the expert know-how and the best vehicle parts. And if that isn't enough, every time you visit a Napa Auto Parts store when you present your AMA card, you receive an additional 10% discount on all retail parts and accessories. Visit your local Napa Auto Parts store for more offers and expert know-how. Napa Auto Parts is a proud fan of the Edmonton Oilers. exclusive NHL broadcast, Bob Stoffer and Cam Moon on the Oilers Radio Network. Looking forward to this one, the Edmonton Oilers taking on the Dallas Stars. Good evening, Cam Moon, along with Bob Stoffer, Reed Wilkins, Rob Brown, Jack Michaels, Brendan Escott. We are the Oilers Radio Network. Our starting lineup brought to you by Coventry Homes. Flexibility within reach. Get back in the game with customizable designs by Coventry Homes, the official builder of the Edmonton Oilers. For Edmonton up front, Connor McDavid with Ryan Nugent Hopkins and Zach Hyman. On defense, Matias Ekholm and Evan Bouchard. In goal, it's Calvin Pickard. For the Stars, Rope hints with Jason Robertson and Joe Pavelski up front. On the back end, Thomas Harley and Miro Haskinen. In goal, it's Jake Ottinger. Steve Kazari and Francois St. Laurent are the referees. Ben O'Quinn and James Tobias are on the lines to drop the puck. We're underway here at the American Airlines Center in Dallas, Texas. And the puck gets into the Dallas zone. And it is right at the blue line. What do we got going? We're all of 10 seconds in. I don't know. That hit somebody at the Dallas bench. It must. The faceoff will be to the right of Ottinger. Well, Chris Knobloch comes in with the best record in the National Hockey League since he took over November the 13th. But the Oilers losing in overtime to St. Louis. They're going to need to play better tonight than they did against St. Louis. Dallas is red hot. Winners of seven straight. Tying a franchise record. Shot from the point. And that's off a stick. It goes over the glass and out of play as Bouchard put it towards the goal. Jake Ottinger, 17 saves in a 3-0 win at Seattle on Saturday. He has started five of the last seven. Stars have won seven of the last seven. Well, they're a real good team. They're deep. They can. They don't have anybody in the top 50 in scoring, but they've got multiple 20-plus goal scorers. They can score at three lines at you. That's, that's what they can bring. Mark dumped down into the Dallas end, and that'll be icing as Ottinger waited for it to come in front of his net. So we're just 24 seconds into the first period. The Oilers and the Stars here at the American Airlines Center. You really enjoyed the start of that Devils Rangers game, didn't you? <laughs> yes, <laughs> yes I, did. I know you did. I think it was great for Travis Green. That <laughs> yep. team needed to come together. They got pushed around by the Rangers a couple times and give Rempe credit. He went toe to toe and oh, five good spirited tilt. Yeah. Little five on five line brawl. No big deal. Here's Johnston, his centering pass. That goes off a stick just wide of the Edmonton net. Haskinen will keep it in. Ekholm will rim it and hits Haskinen. The puck stays inside the Oilers' zone. As it comes for East Ankoven, we'll get it loose on the right for Ben. His shot and his save made by Pickard. Puck goes over to the left wing, and it's McDavid up the boards to Nugent Hopkins. who will cut to center ice, dump it in on the backhand. Ottinger to play it for Haskinen up the right wing. He'll bring it out to center ice. 
Haskinen strolls it over the blue line. CC cross to Nurse. Now up the left wing for Kane. He'll dump it in. Haskinen back for Rims. Doesn't get it out. CC right wing corner to Fogel. Trying to put it towards the goal. Goes off a stick and off the left wing point. Nurse to keep it in. We're scoreless for here in the first. We're minute 20 into the opening period. McLeod back to the right wing point for CC. His shot. That's blocked, but he keeps it in. And over to the right wing for Kane. His shot saved by Ottinger. And the rebound to the right corner. Fogel out to McLeod. Another save by Ottinger. Puck to the right wing corner. Along the boards. Kane to the top of the circle. That hacked out of the zone by Marchman. Two excellent looks from the Oilers earlier. Real good work down low. Grinding it out. CC in behind the Edmonton net to Nurse, left wing corner. Long bank pass to Drysaddle. Take it back into his own end. 99 points for Drysaddle. That's seventh in the NHL coming into this evening's action. But the puck gets turned over. Brought in on the right wing. In front of the net. The shot scores. Faxa with the redirection in front of the net. It gets underneath Pickard. And it's 1-0 for the Stars. Well, that's an ugly goal to start this game on Calvin Pickard. And Leon Dreisaitl reverses back into his own zone. Doesn't take a direct route. Loses control of the puck. Tries to come up. Sam Steele was picking him off. And they swung it across. And then Pickard can't pick it up clean on a deflection. Not a great goal against Pickard. But Leon's got to make a better play than that. Faxa gets his seventh of the year. 2.08 into the opening period. And Dallas up 1-0 on the Edmonton Oilers. That's an unforced error there from Leon, though. You're carrying the puck against a team this good. You can't funnel their transition. They're the best score off the rush team in the league. And they just got another one off the rush on a quick transition. Off the draw, puck gets to DeArnay. Gets over center, he'll dump it in to the star zone. Tanev on the end boards. Gets rimmed around. And just all the way down the ice as it goes by Darren Neal will be icing against Dallas. So that's a uh, that's tough start. It's a bad start. Yep. And the Oilers had had two pretty good shifts in a row there. Steele and Smith get the assist on the goal by Faxa. You give up a goal to their fourth line and yeah. get your second line on the ice. So Drysaddle taking the draw against Faxa. Gets up the middle to Sam Steele. Steele will get it just to the Edmonton blue line and up the left wing. Dallas, sorry, Cam. Dallas is flying. Oilers got to move their feet here. ARNA with it in his own zone. one nothing. Stars lead on the goal by Erratic Faxa. Up the right wing now to Drysaddle. Comes into the Stars end. Goes in behind the net. Lindell on him. Gets it back to the blue line for Ekholm. Comes down the right wing. Couldn't backhand it towards the net. Robertson was able to pick it off. And he will get it out. Long pass for Hintz. But it's over his stick. Goes down into the Oiler end. Hintz gets to it first. He's in the right wing corner. Back to the point. Lindell will shoot it wide and the net comes off the end boards and Bouchard up to the blue line but that is kept in close to the side of the Edmonton net Ekholm on the right side to Kane to Matthias Ekholm now to Drysaddle he'll bring it out through the neutral zone into the Dallas end to the right wing corner he'll stop up Get the puck to the end boards. Now it comes back to Drysaddle to the slot. His shot and the save made by Ottinger. Puck goes to the left wing corner. Matthias Janmark goes over to the right. Into the slot for Bouchard. His shot and the save by Ottinger. He held on to it. As Brown was in front of the net and no loose puck to be had. one nothing Stars lead here in the first period. Uh, that's a clean look. High slot for Evan Boucher. This one's crazy. Dallas has had one chance off the rush in this game. It's in the net. Edmonton's had three good looks already. And right now, Ottinger looks dialed in. And he had a negative goal saved above expectation coming into this game. But he's played better of late, to say the least. He's off to the left of Ottinger. Yan Mark to take the draw. He'll be up against Ben. Yan Mark wins it to CeCe. Now to Nurse on the left wing point. Snaps it towards the net. Off stick goes off the end glass. 
In the right wing corner. Yeah, Mark to the blue line. Does he see a shot off the post? Rebound put towards the goal by Nurse. The rebound again put wide of the net by Yanmark. Great chance there for Matias Yanmark. Johnston got it up the right wing. Now to Haskin in. He'll get the center. Swatted off his stick right at the Edmonton blue line. Johnston comes in on the left side. To the left wing corner. Ben after it. Now Stankoven in there too. Sent up near the blue line. Lindell was able to keep it in and up the right wing. Nurse to center to Brown. He'll dump it into the star zone. one nothing. Dallas leads. Four and a half gone here in the opening period. Marchment will get it out. That's through the middle. Too far for Sagan. Won't be icing. Pickard's got to play it to Bouchard. Now to Eckholm in the left wing corner of the Oiler end. Up the left wing boards. We'll get to Hyman. Now into the star zone to McDavid. Off the left side to Nugent Hopkins. A backhand. The save made by Ottinger. He holds on to it. 4.52 gone here in the first. Stars up 1-0. The Oilers have had an incredible amount of chances here early in the game. A long-range bomber from CC. Carrick with a great net front. And Ottinger never found it. Real good looks from Edmonton here, but they're down one nothing despite out shooting Dallas six to two in the first five minutes of this game. He stopped to the right of Ottinger. McDavid wins the draw. Goes to Eckholm on the blue line. Over to Bouchard down the right wing. McDavid centering pass off the skate goes to the right corner and Eckholm will roll it over to the left wing. On the blue line, it's just poked out, and McDavid had to wait for everybody to get on side, and they'll say no, that was offside. Well, Connor's got some hop going. He's moving his feet. He is. Zach Hyman hadn't quite cleared the zone yet. McDavid third in the NHL and scoring with 126 points coming into this. Three points yep. now behind. Nikita Kucherov, who got two tonight as the Leafs were beaten 4 1 by Tampa. Tampa's really starting to roll. Finally got healthy. Goes right into the Dallas bench. We'll do that again. Quick out of town update Pizza 73. Bakersfield, Max Warner is sixth. Carter Savoy is eighth. Max Warner is going to get to the NHL. I'm going to tell you that. I'm with you. To, we're talking a couple years down the road. Yep. He's a six foot three right shot. He's going to play. He was good in Penticton. Yeah, he was. First year pro, played with the Moose Jaw Warriors in the WHL. Puck back to the blue line. Bouchard down the right wing to McDavid to Bouchard. is shot, and that one hit the traffic in front of the net, and Robertson's able to get it out for Dallas. Up through the middle, Harley will come into the Oiler end left side. He'll shoot wide of the net. He hammered that one, kept in on the right wing by Robertson. Off the right wing boards. Robertson up to the blue line. Tried to saucer it to Harley. Picked out of the air by Hyman. Now to McDavid. Into the star zone. Over to Nugent Hopkins. His shot. That's blocked. It goes in behind the net. McDavid on the end boards to Hyman. To the blue line for Matias Eckholm. A rolling puck. He was able to keep it in. Harley will bring it out through the middle for Dallas. one nothing stars here in the first. Now to Hintz. In over the line to the middle. His shot. And he put it over the net. Wow. What a look. Oh, right in the slot for Rope Hintz. It's all off transition for Dallas. It's off the cycle for Edmonton. Back home up the left wing. Didn't connect with Evander Kane. Warren Fogle down the left side to Kane. He'll bring it in. He'll shoot it. And that one's launched off a stick. It's out of play. We've played six minutes, 21 seconds of the first period. The Stars lead the Oilers by a score of 1-0. We're going to take a break. We'll be right back from the American Airlines Center here in Dallas. It's four dealers NHL hockey on the Oilers radio network. Until April 20th, make the shift to more savings at Fountain Tire and get up to 25% off select tires, including Goodyear. Restrictions apply. Financing available. Book online today. Uh, I forgot to mention the bonus $50 off any service of $150 or more. No, I knew 15 seconds wasn't long enough. When you play the largest 50-50 in sports, everybody wins. Your support makes all of oil country a better place. A place of kindness, caring, and compassion. Uplifting those in need, changing lives forever. The largest 50-50 pot in professional sports is currently growing by the second. Get your tickets now at edmontonoilers.com and help change lives today. Maybe 
even your own. AGLC license number 645766. Legacy Heating and Cooling is the number one heating and cooling company for people who want heating and cooling. Because you'll save a bundle by bundling. Then you can use hot, cold, hot, cold. Coming through my staff, do what you're told. Turn up the heat, turn up the cold. To the vents, start pushing out tornadoes. Bundle my furnace with some AC. Gonna get a deal from Legacy. Oh, yeah. Save a bundle when you bundle your new furnace and AC from Legacy today. Plus, no payments and no interest for one year. That's how you build your legacy. Legacy Heating. Heating and cooling. Until April 20th, make the shift to more savings at Fountain Tire and get up to 25% off select tires, including Goodyear. Restrictions apply, financing available, book online today. Uh, I forgot to mention the bonus $50 off any service of $150 or more. No, I knew 15 seconds wasn't long enough. All games, all season. All season. You're listening to the Oilers Radio Network. Cam yeah, Moon, Bob Stoffer. We are here at the American Airlines Center in Dallas. one nothing Stars lead. Goal by Radic Faxa. Two minutes, eight seconds into this opening period. So we walked back from the arena to the uh, hotel today with Matthias Janmark, and he was regaling those stories on his four-year run here in Dallas. Now DRNA on the right wing point to Henrique through the middle. That missed DRNA and getting it out is Sagan. His pass for Marchment, little far for him. And it goes down into the Oilers' zone. Sent up near the blue line. Suter kept it in to Duchesne. Steers it to the middle of the ice, but it will come over to the left wing boards. And it's dry side limb behind the net. Get the puck to Kulak, now to DRNA. Off the right wing, out to the neutral zone. It's dry sidle. To DRNA, but he missed wow. the pass. That's going to go deep into the Edmonton end. Kulak to DRNA, back to Brett Kulak. He'll set it up in behind the oiler net. Then he's having a tough shift. One nothing stars here in the first. The left wing to Yanmark, and he'll put it right into the Edmonton bench. Like that. Edmonton's. It, what's the old saying? There's two places you should ever try a back pass at home and on the road. <laughs> and. Uh, the owners have reversed the puck back a couple times and paid for it here. The shots are 8-2. The scoring chances might be 4-3. And they've scored on one of theirs. Goal score, Radic Faxa has taken this face off in the Oilers' zone against McLeod. McLeod could win it to Nurse. Off the left wing boards, that gets out. And it was Fogel putting himself offside at the Stars' blue line. Or maybe he knocked it down with a high yeah. stick. That's, no. where, that's why it's going back in there. It was knocked down by a high yes. stick? Yeah. <laughs> well, the only, it has yeah. to be. Yeah, Vander's pointing the other way. And he's like, come on, man. Yeah. Evander, you're not going to get any calls. You know that. So It was also offside. <laughs> I think that's what they're, from the Oilers' side, they were trying to argue that maybe move that face off down. Yeah. Well, now you they, got to win a draw here. Exactly. They got Ben out there. He's 61%. This is, uh, the Oilers are fifth in face-offs. Dallas is a top three team. It's going to be Johnson going up against McLeod here. Now it's going to be Ben. Oh, no. no. well, it oh, might be Stankoven. Logan Stankoven wins the draw to Haskin in on the right wing point. Off the boards, low to Ben. He'll go to the right wing corner. Up to the top of the circle. Pass off his stick. Harley in from the left wing point from the angle. Couldn't get it through. He's going in. He'll shoot it. Save made by Pickard. Rebound put on that. Pickard stop that. And it's in the left wing corner. To the blue line to Harley. He'll shoot it off his stick. It goes wide. He's going in, in from the blue line. Wyatt Johnston and on the on the right wing, the puck up against the boards to Stan Coven, pass to the middle. Johnston will shoot it wide of the net. Harley in from the left wing point to Johnston across. He's getting shot, saved, made by Pickard. He got his arm on it. The puck up against the boards in the Edmonton zone. One nothing stars in the first. It's rolled towards the net. Johnston couldn't get it through though. Ben on the left wing boards for Johnston. Stolen by McLeod. Now to Fogel on the right wing. Pinching down is Thomas Harley, and the puck finally cleared out. Well, the order's line there got absolutely destroyed. They lost three puck battles. Robertson will bring it in. He'll get it across. It goes off a skate right to Pickard, and he had to sweep it away. Edmonton's got to settle down, Cam. CeCe out from behind the Edmonton net. 
Got it up the left wing. Now to McDavid. Into the star zone. Down the left side. Stops at the hash marks. To the slot. Bouchard. It went off the end of his stick. Never got the shot away. Tanev will get it out. In the neutral zone. Hyman played it in. It comes right back out. Nugent Hopkins. That's offside against the Oilers. 8.54 gone here in the first. one nothing Stars lead. Bouchard's got to make a play there. I mean, Connor hit him in the high slot. He had a little bit of a lane. And he's having a great offensive season. But he fumbled the puck in a glorious scoring position. Yeah, it's right off the end of his stick. There's Suter inside his own zone for the Stars. Off the left wing boards and out. Aranita Brown put it across the line, and Duchesne will turn it up. We'll get to center, and on the backhand, dump it in to the left wing corner. Marchman's in on the forecheck. Puck near the top of the circle. Jan Mark on the right wing to Carrick. He got to center, took a hit. The puck on the left side. Kulak will shoot it in. Ottinger out of his net to play it to the corner, but he gave it away. Carrick tried to center and pass. That doesn't work on the right wing. Jan Mark to Dearnay is shot blocked in the slot. And it's just poked out to center ice. That was a trip. They didn't call it. Brought in. Duchesne got it over to the right wing to stay in front of the net. And a shot just wide as Marchman pushed it wide of the goal. The puck comes through the middle and bringing it out is Kulak for Edmonton. Over center, he'll shoot it in. Ottinger will slow it down. Lundqvist. In the left wing to Suter. Didn't get it out. Drysaddle keeping it in. Right wing corner to Adam Henrique. Henrique on the right. Up against the boards to dry settle back to the blue line. Glove down by CeCe. Now to the left wing point for Nurse. His shot wide of the goal. 9.49 to go in the first. one nothing Stars lead. Left wing corner. Nurse able to poke it behind the goal. It goes over to Perry on the right wing. Now Henrik centering past. It, it's just knocked away before it got to Drysaddle. Puck sent to the blue line. CC will keep it in. To Drysaddle, right side to Perry with a little backhand pass. Corey Perry waiting. He'll shoot it. Blocked in front of the net. Henrik has it on the right wing. To the blue line. CC shot. Save made by Ottinger. And the rebound comes loose. It's turned up the right wing by Smith. These guys are missing a good game tonight. These officials. Wow. Steal. To Ben, pass to the middle, and good play by Nurse to get it out. Chris Knobloch can't be happy with what's not being called around the net. And then they call that. Yeah. Come on, that is a joke. Steel. That is an absolute joke. I hate it when referees get back-to-back -back games. We have that tonight. Steele got tripped up by Nurse. Darnell Nurse cannot believe that's a penalty. And that, here again, the Oilers, there's one big difference. One big difference between the two teams is the, you, Dallas gets way more power play opportunities than Edmonton. We'll take a break. 9.04 to go in the first. one nothing. Stars lead the Oilers from the American Airlines Center in Dallas. It's Ford Dealers NHL Hockey on the Oilers Radio Network. Real Canadian Superstore is your one-stop shop. Check out their flyer for their PC Ottimo offers. Deals on club size and no-name items. Always low-priced everyday items. There are so many ways to save for real at the Real Canadian Superstore. It's game on at City Four. This month saw hockey's all-stars hit the ice, and an all-star is back at City Ford. For a limited time, get an amazing 0% financing on brand new Ford F-150s. Or choose to save up to $6,500 on the 2024 Ford Edge. And drive now. Pay later. Plus, spin and win a TV, Dyson vacuum, an iPad, or a trip to Vegas with your purchase. Visit City Ford on the St. Albert Trail. From your home to the ice rink, Atco Energy is there. As the official energy provider of Rogers Place, we're also proud partners of the Edmonton Oilers. Atco Energy, powering your place. Customers are free to purchase natural gas services or electricity services from a retailer of their choice. For a list of retailers, visit ucahelps.alberta.ca or call 310-4822. Real Canadian Superstore is your one-stop shop. Check out their flyer for their PC Ottimo offers. Deals on club size and no-name items. Always low-priced everyday items. There are so many ways to save for real at the Real Canadian Superstore. 
You're listening to Oilers Hockey on 630 Chad and on the Radio Player Canada app. Cal Moon and Bob Stoffer here on the Legacy Heating and Cooling broadcast booth. Legacy Heating and Cooling. Home and no payments, no interest for one year. Stars up 1-0 on the Oilers. 9-04 to go in the first period. Darnell Nurse gone to the box for tripping. First power play of the game. It goes to the Stars. Penalty kill brought to you by Nap Auto Parts. Proud partner of the Edmonton Oilers. Face off to the right of Pickard. Carrick taking the draw against Ben. Ben wins it to Haskin in on the blue line. Left wing to Hintz. Into the corner, Pavelski. Now on the right wing. Got it to Robertson. He'll try to go low. That's taken away by Eckholm. He'll get it out. Up the right side to Nugent Hopkins. He'll get it in front to Carrick. Oh, the save made by Ottinger with a right pad. What a chance. Shorthanded for the Oilers. Hintz, he'll split the D. And oh, big stop by Pickard. As Hintz tried to go low stick side. Puck up to the blue line. And Yanmar out to center. Wow, great chances. Both ends of the ice. It's been a highly entertaining game so far. Robertson to Haskinen. He'll bring it out. 8.20 to go in the first. one nothing Dallas. Puck dumped into the Edmonton zone. Into the skates of Matthias Janmark. Now it comes loose to the blue line. Haskinen on the right to Hintz. To Haskinen, right wing point to Hintz. Into the slot. Robertson forced to the left by CeCe. Didn't get a shot away. Good play by Cody CeCe. It's sent to the blue line, but it was kept in. Ben on the right wing. Gave the puck to Hintz, to the blue line to Haskin in, to Hintz. Side of the goal, Robertson to Hintz, to Pavelski, back to Robertson. Goes in behind the Edmonton net, it gets into some skates, it gets into the slot, and it is shoveled out by Yanmark. Don't Penalty. see a lot of Kulak on the PK, but he's out there because Nurse is in the box, did a good job there. 25 seconds left to go in the penalty to the Oilers. Out to center, Deshane. Gets it into the Oiler end to Stan Coven on the right wing. Right in behind the net. Goes over to the left, and Echo will crank it around the boards past Deshane and down the ice. Good kill for Edmonton after a real suspect call from the officiating crew. Harley will bring it out. Penalty's just about done. Harley will dump it in. Goes over to the left side, now into the middle of the ice, and good play by Hyman to get a loose parking. It's McDavid in over the line, across to Hyman on the left wing. It goes in behind the net. Sent to the blue line. Bouchard will keep it in for the Oilers. Except he hit Duchesne with it, and it will come out. Kulak to McDavid. His pass taken away by Lindell. He'll dump it in. Six and a half to go in the first. One nothing Stars lead. Faxa, the goal scorer, 208 into this opening period. Now Bouchard has Faxa right on him. Faxa got it loose, but recovering is Kulak. He'll get it up the right wing to center. Dry sidle now to Hyman. All the way across to McDavid. Turns to the left wing boards. Looks to the middle. Got it in behind the net to Dry sidle. Go over to the right. Up to the top of the circle, cycle the puck to McDavid, into the slot, Bouchard across on the left, it's put towards the net, off a stick and just wide as CeCe had let it go. Dreisaitl misses McDavid with a pass, it comes out. McDavid on the right to Bouchard, he'll hammer it into the star zone. Along the left wing. Gets into the skates of Henrique. Up against the boards with Haskin in. And Kane had got it loose. On the left wing, the puck cleared out. And hints into the oiler end. His pass that it was blocked by Corey Perry, who slid in front of it. And Eckholm around the left wing boards off of Haskin, and it goes into the oiler bench with 5.20 to go here in the first period. one nothing. Stars lead the Oilers. We're going to take a break from the American Airlines Center in Dallas. It's Ford Dealers NHL Hockey on the Oilers Radio Network. From the biggest stadiums to the coziest holes in the wall. From house parties to porch hangs to pride celebrations. From your favorite fuss shop to your local Indian spot. From noodle bars to sports bars to salsa bars. There's a Molson with your name on it. Canadian Ultra XL. Molson. 
everyone in. <laughs> Must be legal drinking age. Every time the Oilers play, you win. Because for $4.95, you can grab a KFC Big Crunch sandwich every Oilers game day. That's right. For only $4.95, you can bite into a KFC sandwich filled with a crispy seasoned chicken breast and topped with lettuce and mayo anytime the Oilers hit the ice. KFC, it's finger licking good. Offer only redeemable in restaurant at participating KFC locations. Other conditions may apply. Foreigner, live in Edmonton. Foreigner is back. The Farewell Canada Tour. You're as cold as ice. Friday, May 10th, Rogers Place. Foreigner, with special guest, Ted Pins. Tickets on sale now at Ticketmaster.ca. Foreigner, the Farewell Canada Tour. Listen on air, online, and on the Radio Player Canada app. This is the Oilers Radio Network. one nothing. Stars lead the Oilers. 5.20 to go in the first period. Cam Moon along with Bob Stauffer here in Dallas. Tonight's Animals of Oil Country 50-50 in support of the Edmonton Humane Society and Dogs with Wings. Helping ensure all domestic animals in northern Alberta have a safe, loving home and can provide assistance to people in need. Puck shot into the Oilers' end. It goes in behind the net. Eckholm up the left wing to the line. Duchesne will keep it in. A shot, and that's just off the stick on the left side of Marchman. It gets to the blue line, and it's Fogel to bring it out for the Oilers as he comes down the right wing. Into the star zone. He'll put it in behind the net. It rims to the left to Matthias Eckholm. Down low and behind the goal to Fogel. Oh, jam it on net and the save made by Ottinger. Puck gets to the slot area and Sagan will get it out for Duchesne. Into the Oiler end right wing. He'll backhand wide to the Edmonton goal. Puck cleared out. So I'll tell you, Darnell Nurse, offer a misconduct cam. Edmonton's down a five penalty or five defensemen. Do not like that call to begin with. Then they double down and give him a misconduct. That's weak. Fogel inside his own end. Slow it up. Give it to Bouchard. It'll go in behind the net. Bouchard up through the middle to the left and that's off a stick and into the bench with 4.15 to go in the first. one nothing. Stars lead. Matias Janmark tripped right in front of the Dallas bench about 45 seconds before the nurse penalty when he had the puck. And then uh, Drysaddle cross-checked to the ice on a scoring chance. They didn't call either. And then Nurse thought he could get away with a little interior little trip. He didn't. He protested too much, and then they give him his conduct. And it's the uh, second consecutive game that we've had. Francois Saint Laurent. Yeah, that's right. And you know, anyways, I don't think Darnell Nurse was very enthused by that. He's in the box. You know, if you're watching at home and you're not seeing the stuff that's happening behind the play, sometimes there's a lot going on, and Dallas hasn't been called for any of it so far. Well, till now, <laughs> off the draw. Yeah. yeah. High sticking penalty, and it is going against Miro Haskin and, and the Edmonton Oilers. They're about go. to go on the power play. There you go. Uh, and I got to tell you, that, penalty, high stick. they got they got high. He got Hyman with the stick. Far less egregious than two of the non calls so far. So Edmonton gets a chance on the power play here. What happened? Did we knock our uh, what? We lose our feet here? Of what? That? Yeah, yeah, I don't know. Okay. Well, let's get rid of it. <laughs> we don't need it. That's, it's, it's in a bad spot anyways. <laughs> okay. Oilers power play is at 35% at home and 20% on the road. That said, it's still second overall in the league at 27.5%. Dallas's PK is 11th at 11 81.5%. Dallas, a very good face-off team, as we mentioned, 53.7. It goes to the blue line. Bouchard brings to the middle, left wing to Nugent Hopkins. Oilers down by one. They're on the power play to Bouchard to the side of the net, just off the stick of Hyman. Puck cleared down the That's ice. That's a goal. Hyman's got to deflect that home. It's a great play by Bouchard. He looked off the shot. Hyman, it's tough because Hyman's a right shot coming from the left side there. Dry side all his pass that misses McDavid. Killer using on the PK here. Goes by Sam Steele. 
Yep. Puck brought in on the right. Dry sidle just over the blue line. Faxa gets it out to steal. He's going to go into the oiler end on the backhand. The shot and the save by Pickard is steal. Sprung himself into the Oilers' zone with a chance shorthanded. Could always skate Sam Steele. Yes. Had 130 points one year in the Western League with the Regina Pats. From Ardrossan. Up to the center, it's McDavid into the Stars' end. Three minutes to go in the first, one nothing Dallas. Down the left wing, and that didn't get deep, and it shot all the way down the ice. Pre-scout from Dallas. Yep. Been... Oilers won a draw, didn't take it to the net. Early on the power play. Our play brought to you by Adco Energy, your trusted energy retailer. Learn more at adcoenergy.com. Oilers stood up at the blue line. Cam with Nurse in the box. CC's replaced him on the power play here in the point. Two defensemen on the second unit. Ekholm out through the neutral zone. Now on the left to McLeod. Into the left wing corner of the Stars' end. Goes over to the right. Up against the boards. That puck does come free. Harley there to get it all the way down. Penalty over in 22 seconds time. Nothing going for Edmonton here. Haven't really been able to set up yet. Kane gets to center ice. Comes into the star's end. Goes over to the right wing. Goes cross wow. ice. And Steele is the first one to it for the stars. And he'll softly play it down. CC on the end boards. But instead, that's going to go to the left wing point. Lindell will shoot wide of the Edmonton net. Penalty is over. Tanev in front to Faxa. Now on the left to Lindell. Edmonton 0 for 1 on the power play as it gets cleared out. Tanev at his own blue line. Now pass through the middle. Picked off by Perry. He'll walk in. He'll rip it off the bar. And that puck goes over to the left wing. That was a heater by Perry, but it stays out. Edmonton has hit the iron twice in this period. Once by CeCe and now once by Corey Perry. Harley on the left wing point. Puck gets to the middle. Turning. Pavelski shot. Nice save by Pickard. And the puck into the left wing corner. Kulak got it up the boards. Haskin is going to keep it in. Played in behind the Edmonton net. It goes over to the right wing. one nothing Stars. Minute 10 to go here in the first period. Along the right wing inside the Oilers zone. Henrique to the middle. For Dayarnay, for Yanmark, that misses him. It goes down the ice. Ottinger sets it to Harley. We're into the last minute of the first period. Off the left wing. Robertson will flip it through center. Bouchard comes up the right wing. Out of Fogel in the neutral zone. Cross ice finds McDavid. He'll come in through the middle. A shot save Ottinger. Rebound Ottinger. Stop that from the angle. Puck along the left wing inside the start zone. Tanev. Over to Suter. Suter back to Tanev. Tanev got it on the right wing to the blue line. Kept in. Bouchard to McDavid to Nugent Hopkins. Side of the net. Save made by Ottinger. Off of Hyman. Puck on the left wing point to the blue line. Bouchard. Right wing to Nugent Hopkins. 15 seconds to go in the period. Left wing point to Bouchard. A shot. Ottinger saved it. I don't think he saw it, but it hit him. Puck in the right wing corner. McDavid. Over to the left wing. Ekholm blasts it just wide. Right wing point, Bouchard. A shot off his stick. Hits the end glass. McDavid towards the net. The first period comes to a close. A flurry of shots towards Jake Ottinger. He's able to stop all 17 in that first period. That's how many he had the entire game against Seattle last game in a 3-0 victory. He had to deal with 17 in the first period. Oilers are down 1-0. But, Bob, the Oilers have had a lot of opportunity. They have. Um, I mean, other than their power play and one turnover, you'd like that period. I mean, exactly. they, they survived the Dallas power play. They beat Ottinger twice from distance. One CeCe on a screen, and the second time, Corey Perry with an absolute howitzer just rocket launched one on goal. Lots of, I mean, 17 shots on goal, but Ottinger's got a little bit of puck luck right now. And to Pickard's credit, he bounced back after a tough first goal against. Leon would like that playback. They'll get Darnell Nurse back in the second period. Not enamored with that call. If you're in the building, it's one thing to sit on your couch and second guess what you don't see happening on the ice. But when you're in the building and you're watching the game, you know, should it be 1-1 in power plays? Probably not. Should it be a 1-0 Dallas lead? Probably not. Winners are going to have to dig in here and work their way. This is a good team. And right now they're a good team. Cam, they're playing 
like when the Oilers won their 16 straight games, they had a lot of things go right. I'd say Dallas had some things go right in that first period to be up one nothing. Fair comment. One nothing. Stars lead after 20. Radic facts at 208 into the first period from Steele and Smith. That's been it. We're through 20 shots. We're 17 to 10 in favor of Edmonton. So a pretty good period for the Oilers, but they are down one nothing after the first period. Reed Wilkins, Rob Brown, they've got the intermission for you when we come back from the American Airlines Center in Dallas. It's four dealers, NHL hockey on the Oilers radio network. Get ready to live sky high. Sky Signature Suites offers remarkable units for rent featuring sophisticated floor plans, designer finishes, and breathtaking views. Experience resort-like amenities including a full-time concierge, yoga and fitness studios, golf simulator, plus indoor and outdoor lounges for you to live your best life. Visit SkySignatureSuites.com and make your home high above the ordinary. It's our YEG with 6.30 Chad. Explore a gripping reimagination of the night before civil rights leader Dr. Martin Luther King's assassination as the Citadel Theatre presents The Mountaintop on now through April 21st. Enter to win tickets at 630Ched.com. Then gather up your family and friends and show your support for the Stollery Children's Hospital as the Teddy Bear Fun Fest returns to Rendell Park on May 11th for their 5-kilometer fun run, walk, roll fundraiser. For details on these and more events, visit 630Ched.com. At the intermission, brought to you by End of the Row Flooring Centers. Let's get flooring. Tanovit at his own blue line. Now pass through the middle, picked off by Perry. He'll walk in. He'll rip it off the bar. And that puck goes over to the left wing. That was a heater by Perry, but it stays out. Yeah, big shot by Corey Perry. Can't get it inside that goal post as the Oilers trail the Stars 1-0 after the first period. That's the highlight zone for Century Casinos all in all games all season. Century Casinos three great locations, Edmonton, St. Albert and next to the Edmonton International Airport. Welcome to the winner zone. The only goal early, 2:07 into the game Faxa from Steele and Craig Smith. The Oilers actually uh, wind up with a Nice bulge and shots on goal, 17-10. They outshoot the Stars. Late flurry there by some of the Oilers' big guys, Rob. But uh, really, chances at both ends. Both goalies made some good saves, and uh, we're seeing some offensive players go to work tonight. Well, it's funny. This is not the Dallas team that we used to see all the time where a one nothing lead was, if it was at one after one nothing after one, it was probably one nothing after two and probably finished 2 nothing with an empty net goal. But this is a Dallas team that can score. And in the first period, we saw, well, in, in would you? I think you said it was a nine-second stretch. There was two breakaways, one right. on each end. So there's a lot of goal-scoring opportunities. I thought both goalies were fantastic. As we said, stopped breakaways. There was two-on-ones, odd man breaks, a couple posts, uh, a wide-open net for Yanmark, where a great defensive play by Ben kept it out of the net. Uh, it was uh, very entertaining. Uh, it used to be a one nothing game or one nothing period in Dallas. The entertainment value might not have been high, but it certainly was in that first 20 minutes. The Stars look quick, though. I mean, I thought when they did give the Oilers problems, they were right in them, either on a puck they dumped in or just really pressuring the Oilers when Edmonton was trying to move the puck up ice. Well, it's funny. I, I'm watching the scoreboard tonight, what else is going on, and one of the games right now is is the LA Kings are playing. And we saw when the LA Kings would dump the puck and if they didn't have a forecheck, they would just stand in the neutral zone. Dallas is the anti-LA. They're in the forecheck all the time. They're very aggressive on their penalty kill, aggressive in the neutral zone. Uh, they get pucks in deep and they're trying to force the turnovers. And what they have is, in, I, I know, was it eight guys or 10 guys right now with 49 points on the season? This team is is deep from top to bottom. So they have the guys that if, they, if you turn the puck over it'll quickly be in the back of your net and who scored the first was it Faxa that scored the first goal Faxa got the goal yeah. and he's a fourth liner so they turn the puck over quickly two on one and all of a sudden in the back of the net so uh, they are fast they are quick sometimes when you're a quick team and you're trying to create 
you will give up the chance against. And we saw the Oilers get some opportunities that way. Uh, that's why they've got a good goalie in Dallas, because they sometimes give up uh, a few breaks against. And we saw that in the first period. But highly entertaining. Uh, looking forward to the final 40 between two very good teams that right now are both playing very well. Yeah, both teams 0 for 1 on the power play. Uh, Perry hit the post. Uh, CC hit the post. Uh, Duchesne made a really creative move. And you can see him on the bench after. He just came over say to myself why did I shoot it that way after I made that great move <laughs> yeah it was a wonderful play uh, there's talent up and down this lineup and uh, it's funny you know that Bob thought that the Oilers controlled that period and they did it uh, at parts, but there were a number of great A's that Dallas had as well, and they missed a couple wide up ones going over the net. A wonderful play by Duchesne. He went wide on Bouchard uh, and beat Pickard. He just wasn't able to beat the, the goalposts as he couldn't find find the net. Uh, entertaining. Uh, both the, you are seeing two of the elite teams in the National Hockey League, and we saw that in the first 20 minutes, and when you have elite teams playing each other, if you turn the puck over, if you make a mistake, they capitalize. And the goal that they scored was just a, a simple mistake in the neutral zone by Leon. He just kind of fanned on the shot. Uh, three seconds, four seconds later, it's in the back of his net. Yeah, and pick, both, again, both goalies good, and they just replayed the facts of the goal here on TV, and that's one of the goals. Pick, uh, Pickard got about 80% of it, <laughs> and the 20% the of the puck he didn't get uh, carried it over the line. Well, and this is where I know a good buddy of mine, Strides, hates the word puck luck, but in in that first period, the Oilers hit two posts, you know, a half an inch here or there. Those are goals. And on the goal that Faxa scored, Pickard got most of it. And instead of the puck hitting his pad and bouncing it out or hitting his pad and staying under, it went pad, 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 and this squeaked across the goal line. Uh, that's just an unlucky break for, for Pickard and the Oilers and a very fortunate bounce for Fox and the Stars, but I don't believe, the way that the first 20 minutes was played, I don't believe this is going to be a one nothing game for long. <laughs> I think there will be uh, there will be plenty of chances over the next 40 minutes, and both teams have the guys capable of capitalizing. Uh, just, uh, I know we talked about it a lot uh, but before the game, but the, the Rangers-Devils uh, game has ended uh, with the Rangers being the Devils 4-3. I don't know if anybody's going to remember the result of this game a couple <laughs> of years from now. There was a line brawl right at the start. A line brawl, and it was two seconds into the game, and I'm shocked that they even... I mean, the score guy must probably was watching the fights. That's why he took a delay, because <laughs> the, the, the gloves were off before the puck was dropped. Uh, high entertainment value. Uh, other than for the, the moms and dads that are sitting watching their 10 kids on the ice fighting. But uh, the New Jersey Devils wanted to make a statement. They Rempe of the New York Rangers, big, tough kid. Uh, he has uh, run roughshod over the Devils the last couple of games, and the Devils made their stand today. Yeah, let's just quickly check uh, the ice time in that game. <laughs> well, that's true. The, the, I because mean, both teams were down to four so, defense. Right, but eight players got ejected two seconds into the game. So we had, what sheet is it on now? Uh, we had Brendan Smith, defenseman for the Devils, played 28-20. Luke Hughes played 32-49. <laughs> uh, he's a rookie, too. Isn't Luke Hughes a rookie? Simone Nemich played 26-23. Um, but, but for the Rangers, uh, Braden Schneider played 27-26. Adam Fox, who usually plays a lot, but he played 29-39. Ryan Lindgren played 27-17. Yeah, and Luke Hughes for the Devils. He's that's he's the rookie this year. Yeah, he Jack's not? the older one. Yeah, yeah, so Luke's the rookie. So I'm guessing that is his new career high over 30 <laughs> minutes in a hockey game. Yeah. Well, even like he sure got to 25 minutes. Well, they're down to one extra. Uh, yeah, they all they, three all, lines they lost two forwards and two defensemen each. So, uh, anyway. Well, that's one where if you're on the you're one of the rest of the guys on the bench, especially if you're a a, a uh, third or fourth line, you're like, yeah, kick those guys <laughs> out. Extra time coming our way. I'm not getting seven minutes tonight. I'm getting about 14. Uh, I'm just quickly adding it up here. 126 uh, total minutes in penalties in that game. Most of them in the first two seconds. <laughs> Well, I'm actually, I didn't even look to see what the, the, the least amount of ice time for any player in the game. 
Other Curtis than Lazar. Two seconds. Well, eight minutes. He, he remember Curtis Lazar. He was only. He was the first. He, he fight. was the him, him and VC were the first. Fight he only got eight. Get out. He only got eight minutes in the game. <laughs> Poor kid only played seven minutes and fifty eight seconds more than the four other teammates that got kicked out of the game. Okay, Oilers trail the Stars one nothing after the first period. Full out of town scoreboard when we get back. Four dealers in HL hockey on the Oilers Radio Network. Hey, Paul Brandt here. I've said it before and I'll say it again. I'm proud to call myself an Albertan. You know, after years of touring this great province in my Ford F-150, I've learned the value of driving a tough, capable, smart truck. Whether you're working for the weekend or long hauling it like I am, there's an F-150 for every Albertan with plenty of options to choose from, like available pro power on board. So if you're looking for a new truck, stop by your Alberta Ford dealer and tell them PB sent you. Edmonton, Rogers wants you to stay connected to your Edmonton Oilers. Honor McDavid! Fantastic! Catch every goal on Canada's largest and most reliable 5G network with Rogers 5G mobile plans. To learn more, visit rogers.com forward slash 5G. That's rogers.com forward slash 5G. Today, when it comes to following sports, a basic box score just won't cut it. Get the stats behind the stats with NHL Edge. So you won't just see McCarr's time on ice. You'll see where he spent. You won't just know Matthew scored. You'll know how hard he shot. And you won't just get Ovi's shot total. You'll know where he shot it from. Even if they're all from the same place. Know more about every stat, every shift, and every star with NHL Edge. With Global News, I'm Thomas Dias. Mayor Amarjeet Sohi says the city will investigate the case of an 11-year-old boy from Osoyoos, B.C., who was killed by two large dogs at a Southside home Monday. It's just un unbelievable, unimaginable that you uh, uh, just can't imagine the pain and, uh, and the suffering and anxiety the family is going through. So my heart goes out to, uh, to them. So he says the city will review all of the previous complaints to animal control about the dogs to determine if there were any gaps in how they were handled. Police are looking for dash cam footage after yet another sizable rock was dropped from an overpass this time on Monday at around 4.30 p.m. as a Subaru WRX drove under the Rabbit Hill Road overpass along Nehende. And Edmonton police have identified, located, and arrested a 39-year-old man accused of aiming a shotgun at a cashier during the robbery of a smoke shop on the city's west side back on Friday, March 22nd. News on demand at 630chad.com. Be a savvy Edmonton hotel shopper. Book through edmontonsbesthotels.com and receive up to $225 in cash rewards. There are over 50 member hotels to choose from offering their best value rates. Edmontonsbesthotels.com. Rewards with every booking. At the Chop Leaf, Greens for Lunch gets you moving. Now you can shake, shake, Shake it. Made with fresh greens and vegetables. Choose from nine delicious, oh so shakeable salads. Or try it as a wrap or rice bowl. So, however you shake it, you'll enjoy something you can feel good about. Visit the Chop Leaf near you or order online today to enjoy some freshness on the go. MIC is a leader in medical imaging and the official medical imaging provider to the Edmonton Oilers. Make MIC your choice. Whether you're a professional athlete or a weekend warrior, the game doesn't stop for injury. MIC Sports Medicine Imaging Specialists can help you get back in the game with a timely and expert diagnosis. Go where the pros go. For a location near you, visit mic.ca. Be a savvy Edmonton hotel shopper. Book through edmontonsbesthotels.com and receive up to $225 in cash rewards. There are over 50 member hotels to choose from offering their best value rates. Edmontonsbesthotels.com. Rewards with every booking. At the intermission, brought to you by End of the Row Flooring Centers. Let's get flooring. Lightning beat the Maple Leafs 4-1. Kucherov three points, so he's up to 130. McKinnon not playing tonight, 127. McDavid, two periods left. He's at 126 for the scoring race as we give you the scoreboard 
for Pizza 73, official pizza of the Edmonton Oilers, the Rangers-Devils game. The Rangers win it 4-3. Canucks and Coyotes scoreless after one. Kings lead Seattle 2-0 almost halfway through the second period. Kempe and Moore have the goals in that game. In Red Deer, Rebels and Tigers 2-2 after two. Game four of that best of seven. Rebels are up two games to one. The Blue Jays trailing the Astros 8-0 in the top of the eighth. And the Raptors lose their 15th in a row. Minnesota 133, Toronto 85 is the final. The Stars lead the Oilers 1-0 as we head to the second period with Cam and Bob. You're listening to Four Dealers NHL Hockey on the Oilers Radio Network. At the intermission has been brought to you by End of the Roll Flooring Centers. Let's get flooring. Portage College graduates are incredibly employable. How does Portage know? 99% of employers surveyed said they would hire a Portage grad. Get career ready at Portage College. Learn more by visiting portagecollege.ca. Sobeys and Safeway Liquor is your number one stop to get game day ready. For a limited time, on game days only, Oilers fans can come by a Sobeys or Safeway Liquor store and get stocked up with a 15-pack of Molson Canadian or Coors Light, now $26.99 each. Available only at select Sobeys and Safeway Liquor stores in the Edmonton area. Must be 18+. plus. See in store for details. Sobeys and Safeway Liquor. Proud fans and partners of the Edmonton Oilers. Over the last decade, the world of work has changed dramatically. It's a change that can cause a disconnect between a company and its employees. But a partnership with Aon can help by making decisions that create a more flexible, engaged, and resilient workforce. Aon's experience and expertise, global understanding, and advanced analytics ensure that every client is better informed and better advised so that they can make better decisions. Whatever the next decade brings, Aon is in the business of better decisions. Believing in yourself takes confidence. At Portage College, 93% of grads say their education gave them the skills and knowledge they needed for their careers. That's the kind of confidence that leads to great results. Learn more at portagecollege.ca. All games, all, games. all seasons. All season. You're listening to the Oilers Radio Network. Here at the American Airlines Center in Dallas, one nothing Stars lead, getting ready for the second period of play. The Animals of Oil Country 50-50 has a special offer for you. For every day you purchase $100 of 50-50 tickets, you receive $25 for Boston Pizza and a $25 sports bet for Play Alberta. Buy your tickets now, edmontonoilers.com slash 50-50. Radic Faxa, the only goal score, one nothing, Stars lead. That was a high event first period. The Oilers ended up out shooting Dallas 16 to 10. At least two missed calls, including one slew foot right in front of the net on a three-time 50 goal score. Usually you see that called. Nurse in the box for a misconduct after a ticky tack. Little, I mean, just a little trip that was happening all period, and they decided to call that one. Too obvious. Aaron out of his own end to Kulak off the glass and out. Huck in the neutral zone. Adam Henrique to Corey Perry. Now to Darren will come in down the right wing. Along the right wing boards to Dreisaitl. Across to Perry on the left, but it gets just beyond him, and out it goes. Sagan with a pass. The shot by Hintz goes just wide of the Edmonton net. The puck on the left side. Hintz along the left wing boards. Puck gets to the middle, and it's Darren to bring it out. He'll get to center ice, just flip it. So the exact same sequence, and they just hacked the stick out of Perry's head. This, they're letting a ton go here. So Hintz slashes at Dreisaitl. Leon doesn't go down, and they don't call it. Exact same play that Nurse got called for. The only difference is that Dallas players sold it. A shot into the Oilers zone. It goes in behind the net. Ben will take it over to the right wing. Up to the top of the circle. Nugent Hopkins forces him out. Spins him around. Well, Nugent Hopkins this. about to get a penalty. Puck brought in. Johnson on the right to Stankhoven. He'll leave it. And over to the right wing. Tanev was forced to the back to the point. Right side to Johnston to the middle of the ice. And that pass. The stick was lifted by Nugent Hopkins. It does come out. Stars. Oilers got to start flopping. The late penalty coming to Edmonton. Puck brought in on the left side. Sagan cross ice. Now it goes to the right wing point. Johnston down the right wing for the Stars. Behind the net to Stankhoven. Now comes out in front of the net. Oh, the 
save made by Pickard as Lindell got an open look right between the hash marks. Great stop by Pickard. Tripping. So tripping the call against Nugent Hopkins. Second power play of the night for Dallas. They're up 1-0 on the Oilers. Minute 53 gone here in the second period. Penalty kill brought to you by Napa Auto Parts. Proud partner of the Edmonton Oilers. So Nugent Hopkins goes into the box, joined by Darnell Nurse, who's still serving the back end of that 10-minute misconduct. So Carrick and Henrique to start this off. It'll be to the right of Pickard. Gets to CC and now up to Henrique to the blue line and Carrick will make sure that it was out. But it was called on an offside against the Stars. So Kulak's going to get another PK shift with Darnell in the box. I hate seeing veteran players get misconducts against them. Carrick wins the draw. Kulak goes behind the Edmonton net, has some room on the left, snaps it high in the air and skips it on goal. And Ottinger, a pad save, and Haskinen's bringing it out. Haskinen out through the middle. And swing it back. Hints will get the puck in on the right to Robertson. On the top of the circle to Pavelski. Right wing corner for Hints. Hints back to the blue line. To Haskinen, right wing to Hintz, over to Ben on the left to Haskinen, is shot wide of the Edmonton net. Mark comes up to the blue line and Carrick will get it out. Robertson has to chase after it. Minute five to go in the penalty to Nugent Hopkins, one nothing stars. 250 gone here in the second period. Pavelski will get the puck in on the right wing. Robertson shot, pad saved by Pickard. Puck back to the point, Ben. To the left wing corner, now into the slot. Haskin in on the right to Hintz through the middle, and that goes off of Yanmark over to the right wing. Pavelski cross ice to Hintz on the right wing. He's about top of the circle. Now on the left to Ben. He's got Connor Brown right on him. Brown got it loose. Haskin and kept it in. Right wing to Hintz. To the middle. Hintz gave it to Ben. Right back to Hintz. To Ben as he goes in behind the Oiler net. In front of the goal. Great save made by Pickard off of Robertson. Robertson to the blue line to Haskin in a shot tipped just wide by Ben. Pavelski to the point to Haskin and now on the right to Robertson. To Haskin in waiting to Pavelski. Now to Ben. Couldn't get a shot away. Ben has it left wing point. Over to Haskin. He's going to walk in. Right wing corner to Robertson. Can't get a pass in front of the goal. Puck comes loose. Penalty's just about done. That was a, they called it. They got it, the hook. I can't believe it. Just as the penalty to Nugent Hopkins expires. So Edmonton about to go on the man advantage. I mean, Jason Robertson hooked. Matias Sacco. Power play brought to you by Atco Energy, your trusted energy retailer. Learn more at atcoenergy.com. So last time on the power play, Edmonton won the draw, but they, they really went after Nugent Hopkins on the half boards and took away any opportunity. So Edmonton's got to be aware here. They're going out, they're targeting specific points. Got to put pucks in the net, too, when you're on the power play, especially if you win draws. Get it to the net and shoot it. Bouchard with it in the middle on the blue line. Left wing, Nugent Hopkins into the corner to dry side. All off his stick over to the right side. To McDavid to the blue line to Bouchard to McDavid on the right. Pulls to the middle. He'll get to the slot over to dry side on the one-timer. Off the outside of the net and then covered up by Ottinger. Face off in the star zone. A one timer went right up after it hit the outside of the post, really, and then underneath Ottinger. That's three posts. Face off to the left of Ottinger. Minute 44 to go in the penalty to Jason Robertson. David taking the draw. McDavid and Dreisaitl both with eight game point streaks coming into this one. McDavid has it on the right wing. 
Takes it off the right wing boards. Comes across the blue line. Goes over to the left. Now down the left wing. Along the left side of the blue line to Bouchard. Left side, McDavid shot. And a glove save by Ottinger. He held on to that. Hyman was right there waiting for the loose puck. Puck took off Tanev, of course. When they got Lindell and Tanev and Hockenpah's out, he'll play ahead of Lundquist come playoff time. It's a good team. Ace off to the right of Ottinger. Puck back to the blue line. Bouchard through the middle. Now over to Nugent Hopkins. Left side to McDavid. He'll go in behind the net. Now to the right to Bouchard. And he blasts a shot and is saved by Ottinger. Held on to that. The hard shot by Bouchard. Didn't really have a net nope. front. Lindell was screening for a moment and then he got out of the way. The inadvertent screen by the defenseman. Face off to the left of Ottinger. Buck goes to the end boards. Lindell, right wing corner for Steele. Off the glass. That was over the head of Bouchard. It goes down the ice. Baxa picks it up in the Edmonton zone as he got to it first. Plays it over to the boards. Nugent Hopkins will go in behind the net. To Bouchard as he comes out through the middle. Up the left wing to Whoa. Nugent Hopkins. And he bounces that puck to the blue line. Now somehow recovers it. He's lucky he didn't get called for a hook there on steel. Goes to Bouchard. Now on the right. Dry saddle into the star zone. To the right wing corner. one nothing Dallas here in the second. To Bouchard. Over to McDavid on the left. Now to Nugent Hopkins. Left wing to McDavid and Nugent Hopkins. Thought about the one-timer over to Dry saddle on the right wing. No hold on to it. To Bouchard on the blue line. Left side to McDavid. McDavid will come down the left wing. To Nugent Hopkins to Bouchard. On the right to Dreisaitl. Gets spun around in the corner. Lindell gets a loose puck up in the air and down the ice. Oilers about to be 0 for 2 on the power play. Nugent Hopkins is center ice to Kane. He'll bring the puck in on the right wing. The shot and the save made by Ottinger off of CeCe. Penalty is done. Nurse in the right wing corner. Inside that star zone to McLeod. Now to Fogel. Chopped loose. Robertson is going to get it out for the Stars. Give it to Pavelski. Into the Edmonton end on the left wing. Goes to the left wing corner. Now in behind the net to the right. Centering pass. And that one goes right to Pickard. He's able to cover it up. Six minutes. 19 seconds gone here in the second period. one nothing Stars lead. We're going to take a break from the American Airlines Center in Dallas. It's Ford Dealers NHL Hockey on the Oilers Radio Network. From the biggest stadiums to the coziest holes in the wall. From house parties to porch hangs to pride celebrations. From your favorite fuss shop to your local Indian spot. From noodle bars to sports bars to salsa bars. There's a Molson with your name on it. Canadian Ultra XL. Molson. Everyone in. Must be legal drinking age. Celebrating 70 years in the signage industry, William Huff Advertising is the most recognized name in the game. An in-house, one-stop shop for all of your design, print, and installation needs. William Huff provides quality graphic solutions for everyone. Here in our city of champions and throughout the nation, they are the preferred signage partner entrusted by many of the biggest corporations, pro sports teams, and organizations to bring their identity to life. Recognize the name, get in the game. WilliamHuff.com. Look, I know this is radio, so it's hard to show you how much is on sale during the Big One Clearance event at End of the Row Flooring Centers, but it's a lot. Like this flooring, or this one, and all these. Yep, all at clearance pricing for a limited time. Now, you don't need to just imagine what it would look like, though. You can use our visualizer at endoftheroll.com to upload a picture of your room to see the flooring in your actual home. Try it. Find something you love, then get a great deal on it at the Big One Clearance event on now at End of the Roll Flooring Centers. Let's get flooring. You're listening to Oilers Hockey on 6:30 Chad and on the Radio Player Canada app. One nothing Stars, 6:19 into the second. 
Goal came in the first period. Radic Faxa scoring at 2.08 in. Oilers out shooting Dallas 20 to 15 to this point. Both teams 0 for 2 on the power play. Face off in the Edmonton zone to the left of Calvin Pickard. Puck back to the blue line and a shot by Lundqvist. Save made by Pickard. Rebound in behind the Edmonton net, rimmed by McLeod. Lundqvist had come in, and McLeod gets it out. Two on one, he's got Fogel with him. And over the line, down the left wing, the shot, and the save made by Ottinger. Turning it up the right wing and bringing it out. Marchman, play it off the right wing boards. It goes in behind the Edmonton net. Now McLeod up the left wing to Evander Kane, back to Ryan McLeod. Cross to CC, gets over center, shoots it in. Ottinger slowed it up, but that's it. Fogel takes it off the left wing board, trying to go to the middle, and he couldn't get much on his shot, and it didn't get through. But McLeod's going to keep it in only for a moment. Puck cleared out. At his own blue line, his nurse. Up the left wing, off the stick of Fogel. Lundqvist to the end boards. Fogel comes in there. He wanted to swing that back to the point. Ben will get it free. Long pass on the right for Johnston. Now on the right wing side, the puck is brought into the zone by Stan Coven, poked away by Kulak, and it comes out. Harley up the left wing, able to just get it into Edmonton territory. Goes over to the right wing. Kulak up the boards, that doesn't get out. Goes over to the left. Backs it, trying to shoot it towards the net. Can't get it through. Puck comes up the right side. And it's Kulak to bring it out. one nothing stars. Kulak will dump it in. 7.45 gone here in the second period. Camus along with Bob Stauffer. We are here in Dallas at the American Airlines Center. The Edmonton Blue. It's Ekholm to Dreisaitl on the right. Looking for Yanmark. That was intercepted. Puck brought in on the left wing. Bad angle shot wide of the Edmonton net, but it's kept in by Haskinen. Perry there for the Oilers will get it out. Henrique to Dreisaitl at center. And a Perry to Henrique. Just got it in to the Dallas end. Henrique along the left wing boards. Crashed in two. The puck went up in the air. Sam Steele can't get it out. Dreisaitl trying to get this thing loose. But it's Chris Tanev that did get it free. On the left wing to Faxa. Gets over center. He'll dump it in. Ekholm out from behind the Edmonton net. He's got points in five straight. Matias Ekholm clears it. Brought right back in on the right by hand. So shoot just wide. That was a hard shot by Rope Hintz. Puck in behind the Edmonton net. Pavelski on the right side. To Hintz back to the blue line to Tanev. Got it in front of the goal, but wow. Ekholm breaks it up. Wow, that was almost in the net. Yes. Matias Ekholm out through the middle. We'll dump it in. Ottinger out of his goal, but left it in the right wing corner. Nugent Hopkins trying to get the puck free as it's against some skates. It goes to Hyman. He'll get it in front of the net, just missing. McDavid will get to it left wing to the blue line for Nurse. His shot doesn't get through. Pavelski up in the air. Can't clear it out. Kept in by Bouchard. He comes down the left wing. To the left wing corner of the Stars end. Now in behind the net. Hyman got it in front of the net, but it went off. His stick goes to the slot. And the puck cleared up the right side by Robertson. Nurse off the boards to McDavid. Comes into the star zone. Left wing corner with Lindell. He'll go in behind the net. Up the right. Now to Nurse. A shot and a glove save made by Ottinger. He holds on to that with 10-13 to go in the second. And one nothing. Stars lead the Oilers. Uh, Ottinger looks locked in. And maybe we shouldn't be surprised. The numbers for him over his last five starts, Cam. 942 save percentage. 1.40 goals against average. All victories. Seven Seven goals against in five games. It's a Stars team that's 12 and two in the last four teams. Wow, they're, they're playing very well, and they're they're good. They're good, really good. Edmonton's been the best team in the league since the coaching change on November the 13th. It's unfortunate yep. the three nine and one start cost somebody his job. Oilers have played well in this game. But haven't solved Ottinger yet. Puck back to the blue line. Nurse to the middle of Fogel is shot and a stick saved by Ottinger. Puck cleared out. Nurse up the left wing. That doesn't get to McLeod. 
Sagan will bring it in on the right side. He'll get it to the middle. A shot by Harley, and he put it over the Edmonton goal. Kane to Fogel, and he'll skate down the left side. Into the oh. star's end. It's pass for what are you doing? Nurse misses, and then the pass to Haskin and misses. Otherwise, he could have had a breakaway. Harley back into his own zone. Up the left wing, just off the stick of Marchman. It goes deep into the Oiler end. 1-0 Stars, 9.25 to go in the second period. Quick shift, getting McDavid's line back on the ice here. Move the puck up the ice. CeCe through the middle. Off of Nugent Hopkins. Goes into the Stars' end. Ottinger played it to the corner. McDavid there for Edmonton. To the left wing point. Kulak, his shot, it's blocked, but he gets it right back. Winds up, doesn't shoot. Now comes down the left side. His shot, that hits somebody in front. In from the right wing point, DRNA. Brings it back to the blue line. Tried to get one through. That gets blocked. It's lifted up and out. A bouncing puck. Stan Coven breakaway. Backhand just wide of the Edmonton net. And it goes to Pickard. He'll cover it up as Logan Stan Coven with a tremendous opportunity. Put it wide. We'll take a break. 8.51 to go in the second period. one nothing. Stars lead the Oilers. From the American Airlines Center here in Dallas, it's four dealers NHL hockey on the Oilers radio network. Staying at the JW Marriott Edmonton Ice District offers prime access to Rogers Place and the Ice District without needing to go outside. Offering welcoming modern luxury, the JW offers an elevated experience unrivaled in Alberta. Visit jwmarriottedmonton.com to book today. Legacy Heating and Cooling is the number one heating and cooling company for people who want heating and cooling. Because you'll save a bundle by bundling. Then you can use hot, cold, hot, cold. Coming through my stat, do what you're told. Turn up the heat, turn up the cold. To the vents, start pushing out tornadoes. Bundle my furnace with some AC. Gonna get a deal from Legacy. Oh, yeah. Save a bundle when you bundle your new furnace and AC from Legacy today. Plus, no payments and no interest for one year. That's how you build your legacy. Legacy Heating. Heating and cooling. Blue Collar Work deserves big dollar perks. Get a heavy wallet with heavy metal equipment and rentals. Heavy metal equipment and rentals is hiring heavy equipment technicians, maintenance supervisors, PM servicemen, maintenance coordinators, and pretty much every other position that makes Alberta go. We help move the earth that makes Alberta grow. So why not work for a company that makes your bank account grow too? Visit heavymetalequipment.ca to find your new career. Heavy metal equipment and rentals. Helping you move the earth. Staying at the JW Marriott Edmonton Ice District offers prime access to Rogers Place and the Ice District without needing to go outside. Offering welcoming modern luxury, the JW offers an elevated experience unrivaled in Alberta. Visit jwmarriottedmonton.com to book today. Listen on air, on air, online, and on the Radio Player Canada app. This is the Oilers Radio Network. Cam yeah, Moon and Bob Stoffer, we are here in the Legacy Heating and Cooling broadcast booth. Legacy Heating and Cooling, home and no payments, no interest for one year. one nothing. Stars lead, 8.51 to go in the second period. Face off to the right, Calvin Pickard. Jamie Benn kicked out of the face-off circle. Johnston will take the draw. Puck goes to DRNA. Now over to Kulak. Up the left wing. Only got into the blue line. Kept in by Johnston. It hits Ben and it comes across to Stan Coven. He'll dump it in. The rims to the right. Johnston to the right wing corner of the Oilers zone. Gets pinned against the ports by Kulak. Carrick trying to dig this thing loose. It does come free to DRNA. Up the right wing, off the stick of Carrick. Ooh. Ben bats at it. Just missed Carrick with his stick. DRNA shovels it around the left side board. This line's got to get the puck out the ice cam, up the ice. And Kulak does through the middle. Will not be hard enough for icing. One fist. Zone, zone. Get to Suter. Now long pass through the middle, but there was Ekholm to break it up. It's brought in on the left wing and sent behind the net. Pickard with a neat little play to get that to Ekholm. Now to Drysaddle to Matthias Ekholm. Off the boards and out. Right to Drysaddle. Pokes it in behind Lindell. It'll go in behind the net. It rims on the right wing, comes out to center ice, glove down, odd man rush, here's Faxel, get it to the middle, the shot, oh, the save by Pickard, penalty coming up. 
As Lindell had joined the rush, got that shot from the slot on a two-on-one, and it is Matias Ekholm going to the box they for catch, Edmonton. They catch the trailer on a play where Matias was picked off. Kazari's just, you can tell he's working this game. Third power play for the Stars. 0 for 2 with a man advantage. We watched the replay of it. Matias got hauled down the ice. Dallas player dropped a stick on a little interior tap from Eckholm. So another penalty killer not on for Edmonton on defense. Didn't have Nurse for the first power play for Dallas. Now they don't have Eckholm on the third one. One nothing stars. We're here in the second. Seven and a half to go in this period. Off the draw. Ben got it to the middle. There was Carrick for Edmonton. All the way down the ice with it. Carrick battles. Hayes getting to wind it up the right. And drop it back to Pavelski. Into the Oilers zone. Through the middle. Just missed hints. And it's Nugent Hopkins to bring it out for Edmonton. Nugent Hopkins with Nurse. Gives it to Nurse. In over the line. Back to Nugent Hopkins. But it went to the goal. And Ottinger was able to poke it to the left wing. And Haskinen will come out for the Stars. Gets through center. Into the Oiler end on the right wing. Up against the boards. Puck sent near the blue line. Nugent Hopkins trying to get it out. Hints kept it in. Now it's sent in front. Shot scores. Haskinen fires that one across. And it gets slammed home off the left wing side. And it is a 2-0 lead for the Stars as Tyler Sagan was off the left wing. And he's the one that scores. Sagan gets his 23rd of the year. Power play marker, 2-0 Dallas. Nice play by Haskinen, yep. and Tyler Sagan's going to score all day there. Well, the only order is a power play. So Sagan's 23rd, even 50 points on the season. 2 nothing. Dallas leads. Goes back into the Oilers zone. Kulak on the end board. They got checked. The centering pass. Oh, what a stop by Kelvin Pickard. He covers it up. Wyatt Johnston looks up at the rafters. Can't believe that that didn't go in. A great opportunity for Dallas, but Pickard shuts the door. Wow. Set up by Logan Stankoven. That line's good. Yes. We might be looking back at that save later. Well, I mean, it's got a lot of work to do between now and the camp. Johnston back to the point, and a shot from the left wing point. Not a lot on it. Saved by Pickard. Holds on to it. Just a quick little shot from the left point by Lindell. Connor McDavid. You can tell he's having a conversation here. The officials can't be enamored with what he's seen tonight. And against Dreisaitl. Puck goes to the left side. Johnston will shoot off the arm of Pickard. Puck to the left wing. Bouchard behind the goal to Matthias Eckholm. Up the left wing to Evan Bouchard. He'll get it up the right side. Now Dreisaitl into the Stars' end. Dreisaitl to Bouchard. Brings it back up the right wing boards. Rolls it into the corner. Comes around to the left. Eckholm in from the left wing point. Going to get checked on the play. We'll keep it in. Penalty coming up. Puck in the right wing corner. Oilers are going to be on the power play. Pickard's gone to the bench for the extra attacker. Eckholm has it on the left wing. Now to Bouchard. Bouchard across to Eckholm. Somehow got it through. Went off to Stankhoven. But Eckholm. Down the right wing now, touched by the Stars, but Bouchard gets a hit in right there at the end. That's going to draw a crowd. Five forty to go here in the second period. Two nothing. Dallas leads. Did they even this up on Bouchard? They might have. They evened it up. 
almost 27. Two minutes, okay. Wow. Oh, that's it. That's it. He yeah, pointed, he po he like pointed to uh, Bouchard. I guess that was just the warning. We'll take a break. Oilers in the power play when we come back. 2 nothing. Stars lead. 540 to go in the second. From the American Airlines Center in Dallas, it's four dealers NHL hockey on the Oilers radio network. Hey, Paul Brandt here. You know what I'm a fan of? Alberta. The wide open spaces, the highways and byways, and a rugged, beautiful terrain that I'm proud to call home. Maybe that's why I'm also a fan of my Ford F-150. It's tough, capable, and smart, which makes it a natural fit for roads like these. So if it's a new truck you're looking for, look no further than the truck Albertans love to drive. F-150. Head into your Alberta Ford dealer and tell them PB sent you. Every time the Oilers play, you win. Because for $4.95, you can grab a KFC Big Crunch sandwich every Oilers game day. That's right. For only $4.95, you can bite into a KFC sandwich filled with a crispy seasoned chicken breast and topped with lettuce and mayo anytime the Oilers hit the ice. KFC, it's finger licking good. Offer only redeemable in restaurant at participating KFC locations. Other conditions may apply. Foreigner, live in Edmonton. Foreigner is back. The Farewell Canada Tour. You're as cold as ice. Friday, May 10th, Rogers Place. Foreigner, with special guest, Ted Pins. Tickets on sale now at Ticketmaster.ca. Foreigner, the Farewell Canada Tour. All games, all season. You're listening to the Oilers Radio Network. 2 nothing Stars lead. 5.40 to go in the second period. Cam Moon along with Bob Stauffer here at the American Airlines Center in Dallas. Edmonton goes on the power play. Faceoff will be to the right of Ottinger. I don't even know what Marchman did. With Ek Ekholm, I gotta tell you, I don't actually know what he did. Well, they called it a hook. Are they? Are so they? Ekholm's stick came up and caught. Oh no! So they got the wrong guy. Or is there no? Marchment just came out of the penalty box. Did they pull the penalty off the board? Or have they got the wrong player? The, the gate's still open. Pete, Pete DeBoer is not going to be happy on this. Good call yeah. by you. Yeah, they got the wrong, wrong guy. I, I Case gotta, of mistaken identity. I got to tell you, there's been far more egregious plays in that that have not been called. It's a bit of a tough sequence there on Wyatt Johnson. Okay. I didn't think that's a penalty. Johnston goes to the box. Edmonton on the power play. Brought to you by Atco Energy, your trusted energy retailer. Learn more at atcoenergy.com. Puck into the right wing corner of the star zone. Willers down 2 0 here in the second period. Nugent Hopkins digs it loose to dry sidle on the right wing. Comes down the right wing towards the hash mark. Stops to the blue line to Bouchard. Now over to McDavid. Down the left. McDavid to the left wing corner. Button hooks back towards the boards to the blue line for Bouchard. Now on the left to McDavid. Side of the net. That went off a stick. Now it's Hyman on the left wing. Into the corner. Over to Drysaw. That skips over his stick, but Bouchard keeps it in. To Nugent Hopkins. Down the left side to McDavid. Oh, he wanted to go cross ice to Drysaddle. And Hintz got his stick in the way. It's Bouchard in the middle on the blue line. He'll rip it just wide. Came off the end boards. Goes to the right wing corner. Drysaddle to the point for Bouchard. Brings the puck to the middle of the ice. Now to McDavid on the right wing. Over to Bouchard. One timer and that one blocked. Puck sent to the line just out. Edmonton has to regroup. McDavid will bring it into the Stars end. Over to the right wing for dry side. 49 seconds to go on the man advantage. Edmonton down 2-0. We're here in the second period. 425 to go. McDavid, right wing corner to dry side. Up to the top of the circle. Let McDavid in the corner in front of the net. He put it right off the skate of Nugent Hopkins. Puck brought out. Down the right wing is Sagan. Into the oiler end. Oh, blast it on net. And the save by Pickard. He holds on. 30 seconds left to go on that penalty to Wyatt Johnston.
Face off deep in Edmonton territory to the left of Pickard. Looks like uh, McLeod's got a broken twig here. Uh -huh. They'll require a replacement, which he now has. There's McLeod, Kane, and Perry out there with Nurse and Eckholm. They drop it. Puck goes to Nurse. To Matthias Eckholm behind the Edmonton goal. Now coming out with it through the middle. Eckholm to Kane. That gets broken up at the blue line by Harley. He'll get it down the ice. Your best chance of getting zone entry with the second unit is give McLeod the puck with speed. He can skate and he can transport it. McLeod comes in on the left wing. Got it to the end board. Kane trying to get it free. It does come free. Penalty's just about done, but that is brought out. Here's the odd man rush. Johnston's out of the box. Puck to the middle. Harley to Johnston. He scores. Wyatt Johnston goes high to the glove side on Pickard. It's 3-0 Dallas. Tough read there from Darnell Nurse. And they're off in a four on oh, four on one. And Wyatt Johnson is his 30th goal of the season. Thomas Harley will draw an assist. And that might be it tonight. The way Ottinger's playing goal, I don't know if they can get three. I don't know if they can get one, let alone three. Yeah. 30th of the year for Wyatt Johnson. Harley with his 41st point. 16-27 time of the goal. The Stars are up 3-0 on the Oilers. Pickard on the left. Found Kulak. He was able to get it out. Now Sagan in the neutral zone. Dump it into the corner. Kulak after it, so is DRNA. Puck goes to Sagan to the blue line. Haskin in. Oh, shoot it. Save made by Pickard. Sagan right back to the blue line. Haskin in another shot. Now one steered aside by Pickard. Vogel's able to get it out. And Henrique now through center ice. Off the left wing boards and in. Haskin in on the right wing in his own zone. Comes loose is Brown. Got it to the end boards. Haskin and off the glass, off the stick of Nurse. It goes into the Edmonton bench with 2.44 to go here in the second period. 3 0 Dallas leading Edmonton. Baxa scored in the first period. Sagan on the power play. Johnston just after he had served the penalty. That's an even strength goal to make it 3 0. Harley and Faxa with the assist on that Johnston goal. Race off to the left of Ottinger. Robertson will get it up in the air and out. Hmm. Nurse and Bouchard here. The Nugent Hopkins for center ice. Dumps it in. Tanev was able to glove it down, but then checked by McDavid to the left wing corner. Into the skates of Hyman. He gets dumped down. He's trying to get back up. Lindell will get it around the boards. It'll go to Robertson. Get it out to center ice. The puck flipped into the Edmonton zone by Hintz. On the right wing, Hyman can't clear it, but Bouchard will. He'll give it to McDavid in over the line with Nugent Hopkins waiting. The shot saved by Andre. Rebound. Oh, Andre just got his glove on it as McDavid got two opportunities. Tried to bank it in, I think, off him. Pavelski will bring it out. Get over center ice and shoot it in. Pickard will stop it behind the net. Minute 45 to go in the second. 3-0, Stars lead. Nugent Hopkins over to Bouchard at the Edmonton blue line. Now Johnston brought the puck into the Oilers zone. Right wing to Ben. Checked on the play by Dreisaitl. Puck comes free to Perry. Was it behind the oiler net? Left wing corner to Dreisaitl. His pass hit a stick. Johnston will get it to the side of the net. Scores! Ben right on the doorstep. Got the feed from Stan Coven to make it 4-0 stars. The 
as Ben gets his 19th of the year. Well, these own turnovers. Nice play by Stan Coleman to set him up. Got a lot of talent. Eighteen forty-two. Time of that goal. It's four nothing Dallas. Kanev will keep the puck in on the right wing point. Goes in behind the net, inside the Oilers zone. Carrick. We're into the last minute here in the second period. It comes in front of the goal. Backhand scores. That puck got turned over. That rolls right in front of the net. And the opportunity there. And Steele goes upstairs to make it 5-0. The wheels have come off here in the latter part of the second period. Sam Steele just outweighing Pickard and went right up top on the backhand. Fax was had an unbelievable game. Yeah, Fax just chops it in front of the net. He's got three points. 1904, time of that goal. Sagan on the left wing point will keep it in. Darren A on the end boards. Rims it. Doesn't get out. Kept in. Tanev on the right side. 30 seconds to go in the period. To Sagan. Now to Duchesne. A pass off. A leg goes right to Pickard. He'll cover it up. With 24 seconds to go here in this second period. Steals ninth of the year. Face off the Oilers zone to the right with Calvin Pickard. Goes in behind the Edmonton net. Wrapped right through the crease by Sagan. And it's Fogle to bring it out for the Oilers. He's got 13 seconds to deal with. Got checked at the Dallas line. Sagan brings it the other way. Blasts the shot and a blocker save made by Pickard. Fogle off the right wing boards and out with it. Second period ends. Ooh. And that's the best news Evans yep, going to go. No kidding. They got completely dominated in the back half of that period. Lost momentum on their power plays for the refusal to put Box Lynette. It's been brought up all season long for the back half of the year. Really, it started the first game of the year against Vancouver. On the road. Teams gain momentum because of the obstinance of the orders of the PP. They had their chance, like they had their chances when it was a 0-0 yep. yep. one nothing game to have scored a couple. And now it's just become haven't had a lot of runaways like this all season long. This is going to happen, especially against a good team. Doesn't make it. There's no excuses to make for it. They got their ass kicked in the second period. It's that simple. So we'll go out win the third period and try to build off that for the game against Colorado on Friday night. Fax had scored in the first, but in the second, Sagan, Johnston, Ben, and Steele to make it 5 nothing for the Stars. And that's where we sit through 40 minutes. Reed Wilkins, Rob Brown, they'll have the intermission for you from the American Airlines Center in Dallas. This is Ford Dealers NHL Hockey on the Oilers Radio Network. For years now, we've been warning Edmontonians on the hazards of our stormwater facilities. While they may appear to look like still ponds, there is moving water beneath the surface, which makes the ice dangerously... The unpredictability of stormwater facilities makes them treacherously unsafe for all winter activities, even walking. So think twice. Don't go on the ice. A safety message from EPCOR. 
Stay connected with your community and enjoy the latest updates and exclusive access to concerts and events by becoming a 630 Chad Insider. Don't miss out on a single moment. Sign up now at 630Chad.com and click on Chad Insider Newsletter to become a vital part of Edmonton's premier news and talk community. 630 Chad, Edmonton's news, today's talk. Where Edmonton stays informed and entertained. Today and every day. At the intermission, brought to you by End of the Row Flooring Centers. Let's get flooring. Well, second period turns into a disaster for the Edmonton Oilers. Dallas scoring four goals in five minutes and 48 seconds, all in the last seven minutes of the period. It's 5 0 Dallas after two. Whenever we have you an Oilers highlight, which we don't from that period, <laughs> though Pickard made some good saves before he got scored on four times. Well, that, that's the uh, highlight zone for Century Casinos, all in all games all season. Century Casinos, three great locations, Edmonton, St. Albert, and next to the Edmonton International Airport. Welcome to the winner zone. You know, chances both ways, Rob. We kind of were talking about Dallas taking over a bit and mm -hmm. getting the better of the chances as that period wore on and then they started going in. Say so again scores on a power play. It's 2 nothing. The Oilers get a power play shortly after that and you think okay, here's their chance. It can't fin they, they can't score on the power play. Wyatt Johnston joins a rush out of the penalty box after Nurse makes a poor pinch. Mm -hmm. It's a 4 on 1 and Johnston makes it 3 nothing and then as if that wasn't bad enough Ben and Steele scored 22 seconds apart late in the period well when you play good we, we talk about this a lot when teams come and play against the others when teams like the Chicago's the Anaheim San Jose's when you're playing against good hockey clubs you've got to play perfect games they will expose you and they will take advantage of any small mistake you made and in this game tonight first period Leon in the just inside his own blue line tries making a pass and he fans on it all of a sudden it's a two-on-one Dallas quickly on a two-on-one. On, one. Uh, on the, the Oilers uh, in the second period, Donnell Nurse, poor choice, uh, uh, pinching there. He thought the puck was coming faster. It wasn't. He pinches. It gets past him. It's a four-on-one. Uh, there, there's the last goal that was scored. I think it was the last goal I started. They're all running into each other, this last or second last. Uh, Leon Dry that, that was the fourth one. Fourth one. Tries going across the ice in his own zone. It gets knocked down in front. Two seconds later in the back of the net. Good teams will make you pay for your mistakes. And the Oilers have made a number of mistakes in this game. And they've been uh, they're finding it in the back of their net very, very quickly afterwards. The, when the Oilers have pushes, and, and a lot of times with the season, Connor's line will dominate, then Leon's will. And then there's a breath for the next two lines. As we've seen, Kane has been 20 games without a goal. Uh, the fourth line doesn't create a lot. The thing with Dallas is there's no breath. They don't have the top end of Connor or Leon. But they've got, from one through four, it's the exact same. So every shift is the same. If you turn the puck over, whoever you're out against is, is going to be able to make you capital, or is going to capitalize on it. They will make you pay for the mistake you made because there's just, there's no weakness. And that's the one thing we talked before the game. The Dallas Stars don't have superstars. They've got a lot of very good players. They are deep top to bottom. There's no real weakness in their game. So if you make mistakes, if you're a little bit off, you're going to find yourself on the wrong side of the scoreboard. And when the Oilers have had their chances, and there have been chances for them tonight, because the aggressiveness of Dallas will create odd man breaks or mistakes, Ottinger has been excellent. He's made the saves he's had to make, and uh, this become a game that was one nothing through the halfway through has turned into a, a laugher. And the Oilers right now got 20 minutes to try and find some confidence or, or maybe some message they can send to a Dallas team that right now is having their way. Shots in that period, 18-10 for the Stars. So now 28-26 for Dallas after two periods, Rob. But I think the the to me anyway, I would think that the frustrating thing for fans of the Oilers would be this is this is what happens is they they beat themselves. Yeah. You know, and you mentioned it, and, and tonight the good players, Drysital, twice two turnovers and that pass in the second period like really ill like diagonal from the own corner from your own corner nurse like there's no way as you say the risk reward of that pinch i mean you know the guy's coming out of the box so you the, your players should be shouting at you and they would be yeah. you know so and if he keeps that in 
He the, keeps it. The, the, you're probably changing anyway. Well, if you if you win it when he pinched, he was kind of turned sideways with his stick outstretched. So if he keeps it in, he's keeping it in against the boards. He's not turning it into a scoring chance because he, he only had one hand on his stick and he was. He, I think he realized he took two steps, realized okay, this isn't as fast as I thought. Now he was in a defensive panic mode. How can I somehow keep the puck on this side? And the the Leon one in his own zone. If he's successful with his pass, he's hitting Evan Bouchard with a pass, and Evan would have been at just above the face-off off in his own zone. There, there's so the the reward is Evan Bouchard has the puck uh, 170 feet from Dallas's net. The risk is if it goes wrong. Well, Leon is in the corner; he's against the boards. Evan is way wide. If it goes wrong and there's a turnover, as we saw, it's a three-on-one. And eventually, Stan Coven, who the young kid, uh, we watched him in the World Juniors a couple years ago, played in Kamloops, had a, a million points in the Western Hockey League, just up from the minors. He is a fantastic young hockey player, and he fires a puck at Ben Stick. Ben has scored, I don't know what he's had in his career, 300, 400 goals, all in about the same area. Big man. Uh, it was, I feel for Calvin Pickard Reed in this game because Calvin Pickard probably has made seven or eight wonderful saves. Yet through 40 minutes, he's given up five goals. Yeah, that's the, that's the crazy thing. If people are just tuning in, they're like, well, Pickard's given up five on 28 shots. He's made a lot of good saves. Uh, but He's got two or three breakaway saves in this game. Yep, and Dallas has shot wide on a couple other chances, which a goalie will say, well, I didn't give him anything to shoot out. 381 goals, by the way, now for, for Ben. Yeah, just uh, totally spiraled out of control for for the Oilers. But again, we, we felt it a little. Uh, we mm -hmm. didn't feel four goals in less than six minutes, but we felt it a little bit as that period was going on that uh, uh, and I know the Oilers optimistic fans will say well the Oilers hit some posts well those were going wide you know <laughs> yeah it's true I mean Dallas was the better team in that period by quite a bit yeah and they and the thing is when when you play a lesser team in the National Hockey League if you make a mistake they might not have the right players on the ice to capitalize right the Dallas Stars have the right players on the ice every shift because they have talent through one line one through line four they there isn't a, a shift off for you and the others just made too many mistakes the last sh shift the others had the puck um carrick in the corner and all of a sudden it's in front of the net and it's one-on-one -on -one pickard and i i can't remember who even scored was it steel who got the last goal Steele i believe got the last one yeah. again it was the others had control of the puck in their corner and within four seconds, Sam steals one-on-one -on -one with Pickard. Yep. So those are the mistakes the Oilers have made in, the, in this game. Uh, big mistake. B-I-G. Big, big mistakes by the Edmonton Oilers. Yeah, so the uh, Sagan scored at 13-16. Johnston on the four-on-one at 1627. Ben at 18-58. Steele, uh, pardon me, Ben at 18. I have so many goals written down here. <laughs> at 18-42. You can tell me just about anything. I'll and believe the it. And steal at 1904. Yeah, I've just... <laughs> There's been a lot of goals. Uh, anyway, yeah. Not a, not a good end. <laughs> at 1842 and 1904. That's right. A lot of goals. So it's four goals in the last, what, five minutes of the period? Uh, in the last 644. Four goals. Yeah, the so. Sagan goal was the 644. So they, this period. is a game like with 14 or, well, 34 minutes into the game, it was one nothing. Yeah. 40 minutes into the game, it's five. That's not a, that's not a good end to the second. Period. No, it's just like deflating. I mean, even if even if you get to that period down two nothing, you're well, not, even it's at, not great with the way Ottinger is even playing. Even at three, but you got a chance. At three nothing, there's belief. You score one, maybe. Right. But at five nothing, I mean, they're showing the replay. They, they literally had a four on one from their own blue line. <laughs> like, I mean, those are things you. I mean, in practice, you don't get four on ones, no. and the others gave up one uh, ill-advised pitch. The one thing too, I mean, the others have given up a lot of oddman breaks twice in this game. You and I talked about it. Corey Perry has been the only player back on two on ones and did a good job on both of them laying down and putting his body in the way. All right, five nothing for the Stars after two. Four dealers at HL Hockey on the Oilers Radio Network. Can drinking a little less alcohol give you the energy you want? Six a.m. workout, you're on. The sleep you need, no more tossing and turning, and the glow you're after i look and feel better moderation it's worth it be inspired at drinksenseab.ca a message from aglc uh honey i overloaded the washing machine and there's a mini waterfall pouring through the basement room we'll fix it don't worry babe and i might have horribly shrunk your lucky jersey oh life 
happens. Access Insurance can help. The save of the game is brought to you by Access Insurance. When Albertans need it most, they know they can count on the Access Insurance team for a huge save. It's easy to switch and save. Check out their Google reviews. Visit accessinsurancegroup.com. Athletes know that to advance your career, you've got to be part of a winning team. So, what about you? Are you working for a winning team? Well, here's your chance to do just that. Brandt is a strong and stable industry leader with career opportunities across Canada. We have hundreds of positions available right now from parts, sales, positioning technology, heavy-duty mechanics, and more. Be a part of a winning team. Earn your stripes by joining Brandt today. Find out more at BrantJobs.com. Can drinking a little less alcohol give you the energy you want? 6 a.m. workout, you're on. The sleep you need, no more tossing and turning. And the glow you're after, I look and feel better. Moderation, it's worth it. Be inspired at drinksenseab.ca. A message from AGLC. With Global News, I'm Thomas Dias. Edmonton's newly appointed interim city manager, Eddie Robar, says he's well aware of potential dissatisfaction employees may have after a lengthy public labor battle, saying the city has to make sure the affected workers feel welcome and appreciated. Yeah, I think, you know, coming out of any labor strife that you have is, you know, you get close to job action like this, you know, it creates a bit of animosity on both sides of the fence and really making sure that we're bringing people together after something like that is, is, is foundational to how do we get through these things. Council voted to ratify a collective bargaining agreement between the city and Civic Service Union 52 today, which only came about following a dispute the city and union had over pay. And an Eppington woman says she would like to see the sale of knives banned at convenience stores around Alberta Avenue with Christy Morn saying she's heard from others in the area about kids walking around armed with these knives. Morn says this is a 25-year-long problem that people must stand up to solve. News on demand at 630Chad. Sobeys and Safeway Liquor is your number one stop to get game day ready. For a limited time, on game days only, Oilers fans can come by a Sobeys or Safeway Liquor store and get stocked up with a 15-pack of Molson Canadian or Coors Light, now $26.99 each. Available only at select Sobeys and Safeway Liquor stores in the Edmonton area. Must be 18 plus. See in store for details. Sobeys and Safeway Liquor. Proud fans and partners of the Edmonton Oilers. MIC is a leader in medical imaging and the official medical imaging provider to the Edmonton Oilers. Make MIC your choice. Whether you're a professional athlete or a weekend warrior, the game doesn't stop for injury. MIC sports medicine imaging specialists can help you get back in the game with a timely and expert diagnosis. Go where the pros go. For a location near you, visit MIC.ca. From your home to the ice rink, ATCO Energy is there. As the official energy provider of Rogers Place, we're also proud partners of the Edmonton Oilers. ATCO Energy, powering your place. Customers are free to purchase natural gas services or electricity services from a retailer of their choice. For a list of retailers, visit ucahelps.alberta.ca or call 310-4822. The intermission brought to you by End of the Row Flooring Centers. Let's get flooring. Quinn Hughes has his 16th of the season. Canucks lead the Coyotes 1 0 after two. Kings leading Seattle 3 1 in the third. The Rangers beat the Devils 4 3, which featured a line brawl two seconds into the game. Lightning knock off the Maple Leafs 4 1 as we update the scoreboard for Pizza 73. Official pizza of the Edmonton Oilers. American Hockey League early in the third. Bakersfield leading Tucson 3 1. WHL playoffs, Red Deer, 3-2 over Medicine Hat. They lead that series three games to one. Blue Jays lose 8-0 to the Astros. Raptors lose 133-85 to the T-Wolves. Oilers getting crushed, 5-0 Dallas after two. Four dealers NHL hockey on the Oilers radio network. And the intermission has been brought to you by End of the Roll Flooring Centers. Let's get flooring. 
every time the Oilers play, you win. Because for $4.95, you can grab a KFC Big Crunch sandwich every Oilers game day. That's right. For only $4.95, you can bite into a KFC sandwich filled with a crispy seasoned chicken breast and topped with lettuce and mayo anytime the Oilers hit the ice. KFC, it's finger licking good. Offer only redeemable in restaurant at participating KFC locations. Other conditions may apply. Get ready to live sky high. Sky Signature Suites offers remarkable units for rent, featuring sophisticated floor plans, designer finishes, resort-like amenities, and breathtaking views. Situated in the heart of Ice District, Sky is the address for socializing, dining, entertainment, and fun. A building like no other in a location like no other. Visit skysignaturesuites.com and make your home high above the ordinary. Did you know the RCMP polices over 99% of Alberta's landscape? From the oil sands to the Rockies to the prairies, the RCMP has a province covered. Providing policing services to more than 1,700 communities and with over 150 career specializations, the Alberta RCMP has something to fit everyone's goals and lifestyles. Visit rcmpcareers.ca and take the next step towards your career with the Alberta RCMP. A message from the Government of Canada. Listening to Oilers Hockey on 630 Chad and on the Radio Player Canada app. Cam Moon and Bob Stoffer here at the American Airlines Center. 5 0. Stars lead the Oilers. We're getting ready for the third period of play. Played largest game day 50 50 with life changing jackpots. The Animals of Oil Country 50 50 jackpot. Ed sitting at $334,000 right now and climbing. Our next lucky winner could be you. Buy your tickets now at edmontonoilers.com slash 50 50. Jake Ottinger hasn't been scored on in 132 minutes and 21 seconds. Dating back to the Vancouver game, which was a couple of games ago for Dallas. So we drop the puck underway here in the third as Dayarnay will shoot it in. Ottinger is able to knock it down. Puck rims on the right. McDavid keeping it in. Put it off the corner boards. Nugent Hopkins trying to get it to Hyman. Doesn't work. It goes over to the left side. It's lifted up and out as Pavelski got it out. Now to Hintz. Comes into the Oiler end on the right wing. Hintz will play it low to Robertson. He gets pinned by Nugent Hopkins. McDavid takes a loose puck for Dayarnay as he gets to center ice. He'll dump the puck in on the right wing. Ottinger out of his net to play it. 5 nothing. Stars lead. We're here early in the third period. Just 45 seconds in. Harley got it up the right wing to Pavelski. Now to the middle of the ice. Robertson will shoot it in. Blockered away by Calvin Pickard. CC. Top of the circle, Stankoven kept it in on the right wing. Johnston shot over the net, around the glass, and all the way down the ice. Mark sent through the middle. It will be on net, so no icing as Pickard up the right wing. Got it out to Fogel. Will come into the star zone. Now to Kane. His shot. That hit Fogel in the back of the leg. Now Kane a chance, and he swats it wide of the goal. On the left wing, Kane along the boards. Comes to the blue line. Nursel shoot it to the net. Deflected just wide. CC on the right point. Over to Nurse on the left side. Oh, shoot. That goes wide of the goal. In from the right wing point, CC to McLeod. Right wing to Nurse. Got it to the corner. Lindell will get to the middle of the ice. Tanev over to Lindell. Off the left wing boards. Dayarnay up the right wing to Drysaddle, now to Perry. Couldn't get it back to Drysaddle. Lindell will go up in the air, able to clear the puck out. Drysaddle dump it right back in. Goes over to the right wing, inside the star zone, just hopped over the stick of Henrique. Marchman was able to get it out. Henrique on the right wing. Out of his own blue line for Dayarnay. Off the right wing side to dry sidle. Now through the middle. It goes off the stick of Perry to the right wing corner of the star zone. Picked up by Henrik. He gets tied up. Duchesne will get it free and will get it out for Dallas. Up to Smith. He'll shoot it in. Just over two and a half gone here in the third. Five nothing. Stars lead the Oilers. It's inside the Edmonton zone. It goes to the left wing. 
Faxa in the right wing corner. In behind the net to steal. Takes it to the left. Back to the left wing point. Harley across for Hayes get in and just directs it to the right corner. It's up against the board. Smith to the blue line to Hayes in. His shot blocked by Darnay. Now to Yanmark. Off the left wing boards. Down the ice. It will be icing against Edmonton. Three minutes, eight seconds gone in, in the third. 5 nothing. Stars lead. Well, the goalie's playing great. And you, but they got a good team. Yeah. Now they got to get past Colorado at some point, you have to think. I don't think that uh, right now it looks like Dallas is going to come in first for the division. Two goals from their fourth line tonight. Both against Drysaddle. Hard work and grinding. Puck battle turnovers. Been one of those games for Edmonton. They haven't had a lot go right. One quiz from the point. He'll shoot it. And that one hit traffic in front of the net. It's they, cleared out. They've hung Pickard out to dry at times. Edmonton got away with too many men. That's a 5 0 knock call against the Oilers. That's a keep the clock still running call, non call as McDavid comes into the star zone on the left wing. They are all, this is as well coached of a game as we've seen against Edmonton all season. Hints able to get it out. McDavid to Eckholm. Matthias Eckholm will blast the puck into the star zone. It comes off the corner boards. Tanev, get it up the right wing to Stankoven. Out to center ice, but that's it. Nugent Hopkins going to turn it right back in. Goes into the left wing corner. Gets him behind the net. Now Johnston off the left wing boards to get it out for the Stars. Evan Bouchard at his own blue line. Through the middle to Eckholm. Now to Nugent Hopkins into the Stars end. Top of the circle. To Matthias Eckholm. To Nugent Hopkins towards the net, and that's off the stick of Lindell, and that goes out of play. Out of town update, Pizza 73. We'll give them a plug. It's 3 1 for Bakersfield. There's approximately seven minutes left. Uh, seven minutes gone, rather, in the third period. Goal scorers for Bakersfield, Ben Gleason with his 10th. He, of course, is with the Texas Stars last year and played ahead on the power play of Thomas Harley, who's got 15 goals this year for Dallas. Kulak will rip a shot off the draw wide of the Stars goal. Marchman will get it out. Kane turns it up the right wing for the Oilers. Got to center. Now to Fogel. He'll bring it into the star zone down the right wing. Drives to the right corner. In behind the nigga. Bumped off the puck by Suter. Suter's got a, a big ass, and he gets a lot of you. Puck chopped a, over the glass and out of play. Thick build. No. And there's no chance he'll drop the gloves against Vander Kane. We had a few words with him after the yep. whistle. Well, he plays yep. a... That's... He's a hard physical player, but he ain't dropping the gloves with the batter. Face off in the Edmonton zone to the left of Pickard. It's a good hip checker. A lot yep. of guys don't like hip checkers. It's along the right side, side the Oiler end, and it's CC trying to get it out. Can't. It's kept in. Goes on the left wing to Shane towards the net. It goes into the slot, skating onto it. Henrique up the middle to get it out to center ice. Dry saddle in over the star line to Perry. Now to the middle to Nurse and his shot wide of the Dallas goal. Harley will get it out. Pass to Deshane. Doesn't connect. Henrique into his own end. Can drop the puck to Nurse. Nurse to CC up the right wing. 5 nothing Stars here in the third. On the right side to dry saddle. Dump it in. Ottinger to play it to Lindell. Up the left wing to center ice. It's brought in by Steele. On the right wing to Smith. Back to Steele. Still top of the circle. Good take out there. Yep. Taken out by DRNA. The puck comes out of the zone. Smith will bring it in. Shot it. Didn't get much on it. Off the stick of Pickard. It's on the end boards. Dayarnay up the right wing. We'll give the puck to Matthias Yamar. Cuts to the middle of the ice. Now to Carrick. We'll get it in. Cross ice pass. Goes all the way over to Yanmark on the left wing side. Round on the right for Carrick. But they've got Edmonton yeah. boxed out outside cam. They can't penetrate anything towards the net. Brown 
put it off of Faxa. It'll go into the Stars bench, and we will get the whistle. With six minutes and 19 seconds gone, here in the third period, 5 nothing Stars comfortably ahead of the Oilers. We're going to take a break from the American Airlines Center in Dallas. It's four dealers, NHL hockey, on the Oilers radio network. Score big with the unmatched purity of Clearwater Vodka, the perfect companion for Oilers fans. Crafted with the pristine waters of Alberta, it's a sip of local excellence. Clearwater Vodka, where the spirit of the game meets true Alberta quality. Must be 18 plus. Please drink responsibly. It takes some courage to get out there and travel. You never know if your bags might mysteriously vanish. Or if that guacamole is going to come back to haunt you. Or if the plane just never takes off in the first place. But through it all, you have a partner in Alberta Blue Cross. Our travel insurance lets you take the security of home with you, wherever you go. Whatever life brings, be ready for it. Find travel insurance today at ab.bluecross.ca. When the Oilers are on the ice, the big hits are a part of the game. But they shouldn't be a part of your drive. If you've been injured in a car collision, let James H. Brown and Associates and their over 200 years of combined injury law experience help you. Locally owned and proud Edmonton Oiler fans, James H. Brown and Associates is ready to support you with their unrivaled experience, unrivaled results, and unrivaled commitment. When accidents happen, head to jameshbrown.com. Score big with the unmatched purity of Clearwater Vodka, the perfect companion for Oilers fans. Crafted with the pristine waters of Alberta, it's a sip of local excellence. Clearwater Vodka, where the spirit of the game meets true Alberta quality. Must be 18 plus. Please drink responsibly. Listen on air, online, and on the Radio Player Canada app. This is the Oilers Radio Network. Cam Moon and Bob Stoffer. We are here in the Legacy Heating and Cooling broadcast booth. Legacy Heating and Cooling, home and no payments, no interest for one year. 5 nothing. Stars lead. We're 6 19 into the third period. Face off in the star zone. Back to the left point. Kulak shot. That's deflected out of play. After that went off of Johnston. And we'll do it again. Or make that Robertson it went off of. Face off to the right of the netminder. Jake Ottinger. Puck goes in behind the goal. Robertson will get it out through the middle. Finds Haskin and he'll come up the right wing. Poke the puck to the right wing corner. Dernay around the boards kept in by Robertson. His shot gets blocked. He'll get it right back. Lost it to McDavid. Into the middle of the ice to Kulak up the right wing. Hyman made sure that the puck got out. Stumped back in by Harley. Dernay behind his goal. Left wing to Kulak. Now he'll try right. the right side. Running out of real estate, yeah. though. That's not good. Get it up top of the circle. That won't get out to the middle. The shot off the glove of Pickard. That was let go from the high slot area, and it is DRNA forced back by Ben. Turns to the left side, off the boards and out. Through center ice, Bouchard comes into the star's end to Kane in front of the net. Oh, the save by Ottinger. That hit a star's stick, and it was redirected, and Ottinger made a great stop, held onto it. And that's how it's going for Jake Ottinger right now. I mean, that puck often goes in off a deflection redirection like that. Instead, it hits him. They've now added the assist to Faxa on the steal goal, which... It was a, a little, given. Yeah, no, I, but it, they had it unassisted after the period, which I thought was... Odd. Yeah, very. Well, they're just trying to get it okay. right. They got it right. Cause Faxa you know I missed her sensitivity on that stuff. <laughs> of course. They saw up to the left of Ottinger. A flip by Suter. It's cleared out. Shot right back in by Kane to the right wing corner. Fogel up against the boards. And spin that thing free. Now for McLeod. He gets taken to the right corner. So Fogel back to the blue line. To Echo, now to Bouchard, his shot and his save made by Ottinger, held onto it. Kane was in the slot area trying to provide the screen. Now, Kane starting to provide a little bit of the business in front of the Stars net. They got that all figured out, whatever it is. 
That's what he's got to do. Yeah. Shots now 30 to 29 in favor of Dallas. But a lights out final six minutes of a second where the Stars four goals and they made this one a laugher here. There's no way to sugarcoat what happened tonight. Everton got taken to the woodshed. Harry will go to the right corner and Ellen behind the Dallas net. Back to the point. Nurse lay it to the left wing corner. Henrique up against the boards. Perry's in there as well to help out. Perry digs it loose. Now low to Henrique. It's in behind the net. To the right point for Cease. Over to the left wing corner for Corey Perry. Perry gets pinned. I would like them to get this thing free. They do. Goes in behind the goal now. Up the left wing. Puck flipped up and out by Lindell. Will come across on the right, but Sagan was in early. That's offside against Dallas. Well, the offside rule that the league has in large part is in place because of a play involving Matt Duchesne, where he's about 12 feet offside and the linesman completely missed it on a goal. Oh, with the replays, with the, yes. Uh, yes. The ability to challenge it. Suter will flip the puck into the Oilers zone. Darren A gets, gets it around the right wing boards. Brown tried to clear it out. Suter kept it in, took a hit from Carrick. And Darren A high in the air, able to get it out. A bouncing puck at center ice. Steele at his own blue line now. Right up the right wing. One twist. That was it. And it goes into the bench. And we got a whistle. Eight minutes and 56 seconds gone in the third. Five nothing stars lead. Oilers will be at home on Friday. Colorado comes to town. And Edmonton in Calgary on Saturday. So they got back to back coming up this weekend. Carrick to take the draw. It'll go to Lindell at center ice for the Stars. He'll wire the puck into the Edmonton zone. Nurse along the boards. Trying to rim it. That doesn't get out. Went off of Smith. Puck goes in behind the net. Now Carrick left wing for Yanmark. Up the right to center ice for Bouchard. Comes into the Stars end. All the way across the Nurse. Oh, wow. Skips over his stick. Goes to the left wing corner. It's been that kind of night. Nurse with it on the left wing point. Off the boards. Carrick. Sam Steele there. Faxel get it off the right wing boards and out. Won't be hard enough for ice. Oilers have had some chances to make some plays and hasn't happened for him tonight. Bouchard to bring it out through the middle. Left wing to Hyman into the star zone. Goes to the left wing corner. Out of Nugent Hopkins. Haskin and breaks it up to Hintz. Hintz will get it out. Cece back into his own end. Has to go across. Echo up the left wing. The Nugent Hopkins, now to Cece. Over center ice, he'll shoot it in. Around the left wing boards to the corner. Case get him behind the net, but there's Hyman, now right side. For McDavid back to Hyman, instead it goes top of the circle. Pavelski up to the blue line, just gets it out. And it's center ice. Harley to Haskin in, right wing to Hintz, he'll dump it in. Home out from behind the Edmonton goal. Right wing to CeCe. It's 5 0. Stars were here in the third. Puck gets to the neutral zone. Tanev up the right wing. Now it's brought in on the right side. Put off the end boards. Goes into the left wing corner. Johnston, his centering pass block. He'll get it back. Take it to the right. Johnston waiting with it. To the blue line. Tanev to Ben. He'll shoot it. That's blocked in front of the net by DRNA. Puck sent to the blue line and just out. Tanev back into his own zone for Ben. Now across to Suter. Up the left wing that goes off of Johnston. It won't be icy. They just want this game oh, over. Yeah. He's trying to keep that clock rolling. 8.40 right now. And rolling. 5 nothing. Stars lead. Huck brought into the Stars end on the right wing. A 
to the top of the circle, but it is played out. Duchesne went down the right wing. Stops just over the Edmonton blue line. Went cross ice. There's nobody there for the Stars. Dry side can get it out. Left wing to Henry, but it's a bouncing puck. Now able to just get it into the zone. Sagan to Lindell. Lundquist. Now to Sagan. We get the puck to the middle of Duchesne to the side of the net. Sagan just about had a chance at the side of the goal. Bouchard's able to flip the puck through the middle. Mace turns in front of his own net. Now up the left wing for Marchment. He'll dump it to the left wing corner of the Oilers zone. Going in behind the goals, Nurse takes out Steele. Puck up against the board. Smith able to keep it in for the Stars. Well, that was a cross rim it all the way back to the left wing point. Hayes getting shot, blocked in front of the net. Yeah, Mark got it to the line. CC will get it out. Over to Nurse on the left wing. He'll shoot it in. 7.23 to go here in the third. 5-0 Stars lead. Darnell just got away with a cross check. I mean, all day. Ticky tack yep. call of the first on him, and he took a misconduct on him. That time, they, they did him a solid not calling that. That was obvious. Brown to Eckholm at center ice. And shoot it in. Oilers are offside. They got to tag up. Yanmark doesn't know that yet. Stars get it out anyway. Tanev got the puck in on the right. Pass through the middle. They hint. Not too far. Suters in from the left wing point. Edmonton does clear it out. Hyman chases after it. it was flying after it, but Tanev got to it and is able to get it to center, and McDavid picks it up right there. Now on the right wing to Dayarnay, will dump it in. Ottinger out to play it. Left wing to Suter. High in the air and out. Nugent Hopkins at his own blue line. For Kulak, cuts to the middle, gets into the Dallas zone to Hyman. He'll shoot it. That gets blocked. Buck along the right wing inside the star zone. Hyman got it over to the left wing, but Ben with control now for Dallas. Gave it to Lundqvist off the right wing boards and down the ice, and it will be icing against the Stars with 6.01 to go in the third. 5 0 Dallas leads. Radic Faxa having a pretty good game. He's got a goal and two assists. Well, when he gets you, that tells you yep. how good they're playing, not how deep their team is. And the fourth line touches you up for a couple of goals, which they have. Buck goes to the right wing corner. Now rimmed on the left to Ben. He's able to get it out. Bouchard back into his own end. He's going to go in behind the Edmonton net. Bouchard out through the middle of the ice. Now into the Dallas zone. He'll let it go in a glove save made by Ottinger. He holds on. 5.39 to go into third. We're going to take a break. 5-0 Stars lead the Oilers from Dallas. This is Four Dealers NHL Hockey on the Oilers Radio Network. Hey, Paul Brandt here. I've said it before and I'll say it again. I'm proud to call myself an Albertan. You know, after years of touring this great province in my Ford F-150, I've learned the value of driving a tough, capable, smart truck. Whether you're working for the weekend or long hauling it like I am, there's an F-150 for every Albertan with plenty of options to choose from, like available pro power on board. So if you're looking for a new truck, stop by your Alberta Ford dealer and tell them PB sent you. From the biggest stadiums to the coziest holes in the wall. From house parties to porch hangs to pride celebrations. From your favorite fuss shop to your local Indian spot. From noodle bars to sports bars to salsa bars. There's a Molson with your name on it. Canadian Ultra XL. Molson. Everyone in. Must be legal drinking age. It's hell yeah at high speed. Knuckle chucking and corner mucking. The champ loves every minute of top shelf NHL hockey action at the Canadian Brew House. Hands down, the most TVs to catch all the action while you enjoy a dollar off tankards of Coors Light and Molson Canadian during every Oilers game. Plus, your chance to win game day tickets. 
The goals, the grit, and all the games. NHL hockey lives at the Canadian Brew House. All games, all season. You're listening to the Oilers Radio Network. Cam yeah, Moon and Bob Stoffer, 5.39 to go here in the third at the American Airlines Center in Dallas. 5 nothing Stars lead. We got one in the first, four in the second. Both teams have been mailing it in here in the third. <laughs> you think so? Yeah. It's in behind the net. Fogel got it to Kane just for a moment. Cleared near the blue line. Kane's able to keep it in. Left wing to Fogel. The Kane is shot. And the save made by Ottinger. Penalty coming up to the Stars and they touch it. Marchman touches it. Edmonton goes on the power play. 5.17 to go here in the third period. I would put the that second unit on. Tripping. I wouldn't put the first oh. unit on the ice here. That's a 5 nothing call against the Stars. I mean, the Oilers have gotten away with three. I didn't like how the game was officiated in the first period, but in the third period here, they've totally managed this game. So Marchman goes to the box. And he does take penalties, Marchman. He had 47 points in 54 games a couple of years ago in Florida, and he parlayed that into a pretty substantial payday for himself. Guy who bounced around in the... Uh, OHL took off in Florida. Florida is a place where a lot of players have sort of popped. And Marchman was one of Jonathan Marsh's show popped in Florida. Face off to the right of Ottinger. Problem is he popped too much no. against Edmonton last year. Yeah. Game six. Puck comes right in front of the net. A chance for McDavid and the save by Ottinger. And Tanev's saying, how's that not a hook? I mean, I, you know. We'll do that again to the right of Jake Ottinger. He's in behind the goal. Rimmed out and all the way down the ice by Harley. Edmonton's had eight or ten A-grade scoring yes. opportunities in this game. They just can't score. Dry side over the center. Now on the left to McDavid. He'll bring the puck to the left corner. He'll bank it off the side of the net. Got it in front of the goal, but it was cleared all the way down the ice. Bouchard turning it up through the middle. See what they're doing here? They're all over him. Steele was on him, but the pass doesn't get out of the zone. It'll go over to Nugent Hopkins on the right wing. One of those get a chance to set up to dry sidle. Has it on the right side. Up the hash marks to the blue line to Bouchard to Dreisaitl. He'll shoot it. Save made by Andre. Rebound comes in front of the net. Nugent Hopkins couldn't get it through. And Faxa off the right wing boards and out. 5 nothing stars here in the third. Puck brought in by McDavid. McDavid to the blue line to Bouchard. Left wing to Nugent Hopkins. To Bouchard. Blast the shot. That's blocked. It broke the stick of Faxa. Faxa's doing it all tonight, he isn't is. he? Steele will dump it down the ice. Power play brought to you by Atco Energy, your trusted energy retailer. Learn more at atcoenergy.com. Yes, Radic Faxa has really done it all. Killing penalties. He's got a goal and two assists. Kane comes into the star zone on the left wing. His pass just off the stick of Henry. Puck gets to the left wing point. Nurse over to Eckholm. With hints on him, goes across to Kane. Tanev able to break things up. Loose puck to Perry. Left side to Kane to the blue line. Eckholm is one timer. That goes over the net. Puck to the right side. Tanev up against the boards. Penalty is over. Edmonton 0 for 4 on the power play. It's cleared out. Bouncing at center ice. Eckholm now to Perry. He'll come in on the right wing. 3.05 to go here in the third. 5 nothing Stars lead. Haskinen off the glass. Hits Perry. Rolls just wow. out. Good hit by yep. Kane. Nurse. He got all of them on that one. Left wing to McLeod. will dump it in. Lundquist to Haskinen. Out of Smith. Lundquist, he'll dump it into the Oilers zone. Dernay on the right wing. 
And he'll get it out. That pass just a little far. We call that icing. 2.29 to go here in the third period. 5 nothing Stars lead. L.A. with a victory over Seattle Kraken. So they're going to move up to 89 points. Seven games left. Six points behind Edmonton. Vegas is three points behind Edmonton. The order's still the game in hand. Off the draw in the Edmonton zone to the right of Pickard. Smith to the right wing point over the stick of Lundqvist that comes out. Shot back in. Tarane up the right wing. Now to Jan Mark comes into the star zone. He'll go to the net. The shot and the blocker save made by Ottinger. Mark's in up in the air and out. Brought in on the right wing. Shot from the angle by Sagan. Save made by Pickard. Smith's going to keep it in. Left wing to Steele. Put it towards the goal. Stopped by Pickard. Steele after it in the left wing corner. Minute 45 to go here in the third. 5 0 Stars lead. To center ice, Fogel got checked right at the Stars blue line. Faxa will get it through the middle of the ice. It goes off to Stankoven right to Picker. He's got nowhere to go. He's got to cover it up with a minute 31 to go here in the third period. 5 0. Dallas leading Edmonton. Playing closing time, which is a somewhat appropriate song for this. As they've closed out the orders. Yep. They could have played it in the second period. <laughs> they could have. And they exploded for four goals and 